Olvídate del reloj. En esta isla no hay plazos, sino momentos. Esta es la isla de los horizontes. Y tu única tarea, coleccionar atardeceres, pasar tiempo con los tuyos. Contar estrellas fugaces. Puedes estar aquí en un instante y saborear la quietud de sus días. Llenar esos días de historia. Un cielo azul sin límites, donde el mar es puerta y no barrera. Que guía tus pasos a lugares recónditos, siguiendo el arrullo de las olas. Haz las maletas. La isla quiere que vuelvas. The Fuerteventura World Cup. Okay, so we are back and the wind is back and we are going to be on the way uh, soon, very soon. Yeah, we have got a uh, co-commentator in the house, Mr. Tati, Tati France. France. And uh, he's half naked once again. You should, you should be also half naked, actually. <laughs> that would be amazing. It's a bit that would be a bit gay, dude. That, that's not gay. <laughs> It's just showing off for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You haven't no. seen my bod at 45. <laughs> it's not really showing off anymore. Yeah, Maybe so it's back okay. in the day. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> oh, hello. So There's a bit of racing around here. Yeah. Andrea Cookie. I think they're getting smaller, smaller sails, getting windier. Yeah. He was on the, on the 6.8 in the morning, so maybe now with the 5.8. It is meant to crack. We've yeah. heard it. Yeah. And I have heard... The Beast, yeah. a.k.a. Well, no, I was going to a.k.a. Johan, I mean, a.k.a. AKA, AKA the, the Beast, beast yes. is actually the boss of this relationship within uh, within the Point Seven team, like, is in him and Cookie. You would think Cookie's the boss, but apparently Johan so is, is gishing out the orders. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. At 20 years old, I heard, not being, 19. Being He's the just boss is 20. nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we are. We, we really have a really good um, team now. Like, the, the bond is really nice. So I like it also. So. And it's good to have uh, Andrea here. So always, like, walking around, helping us, which is really good. 
we it does need help, it doesn't it? That, a lot. That, that little like bit, that me- mentally, yes. Yeah, you're more relaxed. Yeah, definitely helps. And you, and you always ask him to do something different. So like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. So that's really good. Um, it's getting windier for sure. Yeah. Looking outside, it looks like fully white caps. So I'm um, gonna have some exciting racing coming up. Mm, I'm looking. Are you ready for it? it? I am actually ready for it. We've we're obviously on to the the semi-finals now. Yeah. Goya, Rakowski, Martini, Benedetti, Vries, Fike, Mortafon, This is going to be Storm and This is going to be the Not easy, easy that, is no. it? I mean, there's never any I tell easy you, semis, no. but that's not easy. That's the sh- moment you get to hit number like two, three, like the, 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 the fifth hits, you're just like really like a final. Because mm. everybody's like, it's like on it. Yeah, it looks definitely not easy, that. Yeah. Um, we obviously see Martini win races, Rakowski win races, Goya yeah. win races, yeah. and Vriesweig win races. Yeah. And obviously then you've got Mortifon, who he's hasn't o- been winning o- races, but he's always yeah, there. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, he's always there. Like, even if you make like, this little mistake, he's like yeah. catching up. So um, Yeah, so that that's five guys. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not, you know, Benedetti, we've seen him make finals. Yeah. You know, we've obviously, um, Stallman, obviously he's been getting better, nearly made his first final yesterday, yeah. and, and Daldorf. Maybe... So the moment has not been challenging but you never know with Ingmar yeah but then you've already got six which is really like high seeded riders yeah which is kind of crazy true. it's true yeah there you go on your screens right now um I saw someone asking about the points they said Ben can you explain the points what what do you mean by explain the points so for first place you get 0. 0.7 0. 0.7 it's like a little bonus yeah. instead of getting one point you get 0.7 and sometimes that can be the difference and it helps split the if let's the, say someone's got a first and a third and a second so they'd have in a, in the old system let's say if you got one point you would have six points yeah. but was with the point seven you have 5.7 so if yeah. someone gets second 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 you would beat them yeah. even though you would technically have the same points because you get that bonus 0.3 less, 0.3 point less. less. Yeah. so that's like the little bonus for winning yeah. um the way the discard system works is after four eliminations you're allowed to get rid of the your sh- the worst, worst score, worst, yeah, worst score yeah. your worst score so if you've if you've crashed if you've not had a good one you can get rid of your worst score now if you've been really consistent you kind of think to yourself well that doesn't help the guys who are consistent but oh jesus i just saw johan so did he crash into john absolutely carter absolutely hit the deck there did he crash into John Carter? Did oh, you no, no, see no. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Just uh, full, massive catapult. But John Carter was in the water, but now I see him like, next to the okay. mark. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I was scared already to... Probably wow. didn't see John. Well, everything looks okay, but it was a big crash, yeah, that, wasn't yeah. it? On his own. Yeah, by himself, yeah. Wow. Probably that's, that's called being nervous. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's not how you want to start. <laughs> no, you don't want to like get that. Your, no. Get yourself in the group. No, no, no. So yeah, I'll say before you get to go rid of your, your worst score. So if you've been consistent, like let's say Pierre Mortefont, Matteo Yukino at the moment, you, you think it doesn't really help them. It helps the guys who have been very good and had a couple of bad ones. But yeah. the thing is, what they have is that safety net that if they do have a bad one, or the they're not going to drop big big time big, big whereas time, you yeah. see people with big scores like Enrico uh, sorry uh, Bruno Martini maybe who has got a couple of big scores to drop yeah. but if he messes up one more time then it, then, then yeah, he's in, yeah. the, in trouble because actually you have the, the 4, 7 then 12 so, yeah. The so you have yeah after 4 you get 1 discard after 7 you get, you seven. get 2 and after 12, 12 you get 3 discards yeah. now the reason the middle discard isn't after 8 because I've asked this a lot is because if it was at 8 2 discards would be an even number you would left with 4 counting results yeah. and it can sometimes end up a lot of equal points yeah, in the end, so yeah. they make it odd so after 4 it's 3 which is odd after after no it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah. yeah, after does, seven it it's yeah. two, so you're yeah. counting five results. Yeah. And after 12, it's three, so you're counting nine results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. how it is. That's what it is. So it's... Somehow it's 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 okay, but somehow it is not. Because sometimes if you add up all, all the results, some people will win. But if once you start like taking off the, the, the worst results, and yeah. then there will be a yeah. lot of results. And we're going to see that now. Yeah, we're going to see that so now, yeah. after seven eliminations, which is what we're on now, we've you got four heats until we finish this. Yeah. 
you will get two discards. And as I said earlier, there will be some big movers. Yeah. So the big movers I'm expecting to see, Bruno Martini. If he does well in this round, he gets to get rid of a 22.5. So it puts him to about 22 points, which does put him right up in the mix. If he was to win this final, let's say, he well, could really go up podium style, really, like four depending on how everyone else finishes. He could get close. Yeah, Michelle yeah. Becker, I mean, 22.5. He definitely could can go, go way up. Yeah. Way up. But also depends if you um, take 22.5 off his score, he's on 14, point, 14 points. If he was to do a first or a second. Anyway, 25 seconds to go. Semi-final coming up. Big names in this one. Goya, Rakowski, Martini, Benedetti, Vriesweik, Mortifon, Stallman, Daldorf. Down the bottom end, we've got Mortifon. Then we've got Goya. Upwind of him. Third from us here on the drone. We've got Amado Vriesweik. Then we've got Maciek, Rakowski in the middle. Benedetti is up yeah. there. Bruno so Martini right up near the boat. Um, let's see. Ooh, that's wow, a good, that's they, a good start. Were, they were pumping that's a down start. that middle bit, weren't they? Goya, that's a good really start. good start. Rakowski, really good start. And Amado, Vriesweik, those three riders really did nail that start. We've got Benedetti, just upwind from them. Then Bruno Martini, all the way downwind. We've got Pierre Mortefon as we come into this first mark. It is advantage at the moment with Nico Goya from France. Amado, Vriesweik, though, look good yeah. in the early he rounds. Does look good, yeah. And we've got a little bit lighter breeze, but it is picking up. Look at the big gust coming through. We might see some amazing, crazy explosions in this one because it's the guys Nico. are on pretty big gear. But Nico Goya goes round in first. Second place, Amado Vriesweik. Then Pierre Mortafon. Then Maciek Rakowski. Can't afford any more mistakes, Maciek Rakowski. Current tour leader. Um, he was doing very well in this event, but a bad day yesterday, and he's done an amazing jibe yes. there. He's yes, gone straight he into second place yep. as they came out of it. Nico Goya first now, Rakowski second, and Benedetti is making a move. Yep. He Bring isn't going. scared to go inside. He's, he's got going. Bruno Martini upwind of him and Pierre Mortafon. <laughs> Keep your eye on that fourth place because that is where the action this. is going to be. So Nico Goya rounding first, second place Rakowski, then we've got Amado Vriesweik and it's Bruno Martini at the moment in fourth place. Then we've got Mortafon, then Benedetti. Wow. This is going to be a pretty, a pretty tight match between number three and number four for sure. Yeah. We said it before. This is going to be like, if one, if one of them make, make a mistake and then Anything, will anything can anything happen. Can yeah, yeah, anything yeah. can happen. Nico Goya looking very solid. Uh, Maciek Rakowski as well. Though. Amado Vriesweik. This top three looks solid. The yeah. fourth place looks up for grabs. The okay. wind is it's definitely good. picking up. Yeah. As, getting windier. Yeah, as we started this race, we have seen the wind increase all the way down. So the guys are probably on their bigger gear. Ooh. And uh, Bruno Martini Ooh. is really He's on the edge here. Uh, yes, Nico he Goya round him first. Second play for Rakowski. Then Amado Vriesweik. Uh, Bruno Ooh. inside. Oh, oh Bruno. Bruno. How Pierre does he Pierre do Pierre it? Bruno is the beast. Pierre I'm going to have to rename him because he just out muscled. Ooh. Pierre Mortifon just, there. He just, he just saw that. Wow. Ooh. How did he stay on? I don't know what he, what he did. The guy's he a magician right now. Oh. He got smacked yesterday by uh, Yakino. Yeah, yeah. He's getting uh, smacked left, right and centre, but the guy just doesn't go down. Right, He's like so, a weeble. So now we have Nico wow. running first at yeah. the last mark. Nico Goya round first. Didn't then we've got Maciek Rakowski. Amado in third. And Amado of Reesfried. Keep your eye in the fourth place. Bruno yeah, Martini, Bruno Martini yeah. can make a mistake. He's got Benedetti behind him. Obviously, the two Italians are going to go head to head yeah. down this last reach. Bruno has definitely got plenty of power. We'll have to have another now look at that because I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, it Ooh. took my eyes off the prize, but waiting for... Look at this. Bruno Martini, Benedetti. Battle of the Italians going on. Relax, Nico Goy is going to win it. Second relax. place, Rakowski. Third place, Vriesweik. And it looks like Bruno, Bruno Martini is going to bring this yeah. home yes. for Italy. Um, and it looks like Italy's going to finish fifth as well. But Nico Goya, great race from yeah. Nico Goya. He crosses the finish line. Second place, good Maciek. race from Maciek Rakowski. Then we've got Amado Vriesweik, and Bruno. it will be Bruno Martini and then we have taking Benedetti. fourth. Yeah. Wow. The Bruno did so well then to stay yeah. on. Yeah. But Can I would like another look at that Can mark rounding. Yes. 
We're going to have a look at the, the highlights of the this. So here we go. Matchek came into this first mark in fourth. Pierre, at this point, was in third place. Yeah. You know, Nico Goya, Amado Vrisic looked pretty solid at this point. And into the next mark, Matchek was already up into second. Vrisic still in third. And then Bruno had made his way into fourth place. And this is where the battle is going to go on on this next mark between the Neil Pride sale, Bruno Martini, and the guy in the middle of your picture now, Pierre Mortifon. That was when Bruno had a little moment. Yeah, the moment, yeah, yeah. yeah. Halfway yeah. through, Bruno's job in it, it looked like maybe Pierre just had too much speed and carried through Bruno maybe can slowed we, down have another he just went into the actually back they didn't touch it, no, actually, no. I think Bruno was just almost in the way he wasn't going as fast as Mortifon and Mortifon couldn't keep the foil down probably because he stayed too much too too far back on yeah. the board so you get that little lift you know wow that wow. might look what, what happened uh, but 100% you know, with the full, anything can happen. Yeah, let's have another look at it, just to see exactly what happened on that uh, on that jibe mark. There we go. So Bruno jibes. Mortifon's jibes looks good. And then when Bruno flips, he's, he's just not going as fast yes, as fast, Mortifon. Yeah. And Mortifon kind of goes into the back you get of this him. Stall of, you get this stall, this full stall. Look, look, he, he didn't move. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't, Good. he couldn't uh, turn. He ended up getting stuck. It kind of went straight. Yeah, straight, yeah. If he'd have got that turn, if that was, carve there, and then, and then he would have added, and then switched the legs, you know, like he would I have think he would, have, he would have rolled him. Yeah, rolled he him, would yeah. have rolled him. Yeah. So it was nearly the perfect move for Mortifon. And actually, as we speak, Mortifon is kind of pissed off, no? Well, he's coming in very slowly. Yeah. You know, like as if something's broke. I hope not. You, you know what I mean? He's not, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, foiling yeah. in. Yeah. And he's just stopping to speak to looks like Nico Preen or something. No, it's um, Bruno. Ah, it's Bruno. Bruno, yeah. Ah, uh, maybe they're having a chat. Uh, I hope it's not the major. No, but I think... I don't think it's... They're definitely having words, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. That, well, it looks like a conversation okay. rather than a they're doing, doing than an argument. Yeah. They're just off the beach on the left-hand side of our commentary booth, just kind of wobbling in. So what's the next... E um, heat? No, yeah, second semi, here we go. Heat I think. number seven, right? Oh, someone's just absolutely gone down. It, that is live, isn't it? Is that it? is live, yeah. Coming up to the start, we just lost one of the Neil Primes. Is that Nico Preen going down? We've got Matteo Iacchino down this bottom end. Just upwind of him, looks like uh, Kuzan. Then we've got uh, Enrico Marotti. Then the Beast. And then Goya yeah, yeah. further up. And then it must be Becker Hooper, up that no? top end. It's Hooper, 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 yeah. Ah, Hooper. Yeah. yeah, you're right. We just had uh, Yeah, a bit of Goya. Nico now, yeah, yeah. So here we go into this first mark. Looks like the Italian Matteo Yakino got Johan. a nice He's edge here. Down. But here he comes. The beast is He's beasting flying. it out. Coming oh. into this first mark, he Ooh, rolls he over rolls the top everyone. of Enrico Marotti <laughs> no and way. goes into that first mark. Okay. He means business right now. The beast is leading this competition Ooh. and yeah. he has a beautiful jibe yeah. coming around the first mark. Second place, Matteo Yakino. Then we've got Marotti. Then we've got a battle of the Patrick Riders and Hooper is in the middle, middle as well yeah. in that battle for fourth place this is to see who will get into elimination seven final the beast needs to be there if he's going to be leading this event at the end of elimination seven he needs to be in the final and he needs to be ahead of nicholas goya and this is how he gets there he needs to be in the top four look at it's the patrick been, boys yeah, yeah, it's look it's at down, the patrick boys down, in down. fourth this is going to be a tight Cousin. race Kuzan trying to close the gap on becker as becker's trying to go inside but the beast is he's going around in first look then we've Beckham, got marotti Beckham, look Beckham, at becker Beckham. come from the inside. Becker oh, is coming through, but he goes wide. Cousin goes on the inside. Yakino still in third, and Becker gets a little bit of a bumpy ride out of that jibe. Hubert's still in this. Hooper this. is still in this. He's up into fourth place. No, he's not. That's Cousin. Cousin yeah. is in fourth place. So the Patrick boys are having their own battle yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> Becker at the moment usually likes to play catch up. You at the moment, Johan so out in the front looking solid. solid. Looking so solid. Marotti looking good in second. Then we've got Yakino third. Kuzan looking even more comfortable in fourth now if we come into this third jibe mark. 
the beast is going to jibe very comfortably yeah, here. He's slowly. under no pressure. Gently, yeah, gently. So a cruisy jibe for the beast. Enrico then we've got Saka. Morotti. Then uh, Yakino, yeah. a little little moment as he touched the water. Cousin. But great jibe from uh, Alex there. Cousin in fourth place. And Becker will not be making this final. He needs to make a challenge it's now. It's coming, it's coming. We have still have well, one more Martu jibe. Yeah. Yeah. We coming. used to see him yeah, back come. This you. is where he makes his move. Yeah. Keep your eye on Michelle Becker in fifth place. And he is coming. In. The German is making a move. Matteo Yakino yes. is sailing down on top yeah. of Alexander Kuzan. They're trying to do some moves here. They're trying to keep put him together, off as Becker is pushing through. The beast just needs to keep, keep it, it together. Cool yes. So the beast goes round. Marotti round. Kuzan round into third. Then Matteo Yakino and, and Becker's come on the inside. What this, a great jibe from Michelle a, Becker. Yeah. Michelle Becker has just put himself in the mix. And Marotti is all of a sudden looking in trouble here. Marotti is in trouble with Alex. Kuzan and uh, Yakino sailing. Down down. I'll tell you what, Becker's going to probably for his second here. Becker is he's, absolutely he's, flying. He just passed um, Matteo, I think. Cousin uh. is in trouble. The beast looks like he's got this done. Matteo is going to be in. Marotti. Ooh, he's losing it, uh, Matteo. Nah, Marotti's got this now. So it looks like Cousin is going to struggle to make yeah, it. Yeah, and Becker will will make it. Oh, yeah. here we go. Becker is Becker making a move, but Becker's got stuck. Becker just hit the water there and Cousin's coming back. Becker will take the it. The Beast is going to get it. Yakino's going to get it. Marotti and, and Becker. And Becker is taking wow. it. Yeah. Yes. That's the... Uh, wow. I told you, you never count them out. <laughs> Becker was always there. Like... <laughs> He's always there. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> that jiving is amazing. That jiving was like the, the, the that last mark was amazing jive from Beckham. You okay, let's have a look at the but replays. Johan was Tati, flying, huh? Tati, talk us through it. But Johan was flying, huh? Johan was really flying. Yeah. If if <laughs> Did you see like Matteo made a we made a mistake going too s slow on the, on, the, on the inside while Beckham and Custom just yeah. tried to fly out through. I tell you, all that move, Becker, he's done it's just that. A jibe. He's it's done just the jibes. It's just the jibes. He's done that so many times. He's done that so many times. Like you can never count him out. Look at that. Look at you can that. Never yeah. At one point, I thought Marotti was in trouble. Like Cousin kind of had think a move on him, and then I he think came he was back. in trouble for for a moment. Yeah, and then Becker hit the water a few times in the end. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, what a finish. Okay, wow. Ooh. So, we've got an interesting one. We've got uh, Becker is coming back today. When that Ooh, discard comes in, Becker... going to be a big, big movement coming in. Mate, he's going to be right up there. But I tell you, his his chives are, are just amazing. Mm. Like he's got it down, he's got and it he down. knows it. He knows you know he's got to, like, that squeeze inside in and then keep it clean and then just just go. And that every second that that you can go throughout, you just make it out. You know, and then you just keep it keep keep it together always. Yeah, no, he's got that extra bit of acceleration. Acceleration after the jibe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah. Okay, we've got women's final, full Ooh. feet final, full fleet final. More offering is still leading. Yeah, still leading. So Africa, Mortefong, Limitier. So it has uh, changed a bit. You Alaba, know. Gibson, Van der Veen, Van Horn, Davico, De Jong. Mortefong has extended the lead. Uh, Limitier has extended her lead. They were equal points with Alaba before. Yeah. Um, Gibson dropped back a bit. You know, Gibson, Gibson really needs to make some moves. We yeah. know there's more wind coming. It could suit her. Um, you know, and offering it, she has got a bit of to play with, yeah. but she can only do what she did in the last one a few times before the other girls start catching. Because they have um, worse results. Yeah. Because her discards out. will start getting worse. Because it's been uh, one, one, one. Yeah. She's to get it, but it is picked up already. So yeah. expect Sarah Keita to put down. Win again. Yeah. Get right she's, back up she's, there. She's fast, huh? On the fin compared to the. I mean, if you compare to Pozo and here, like something happens in between Pozo and Fuerte. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, I mean, she's just going faster though. Yeah, no, she's definitely going quick. And Blanc is having some troubles with the speed on the foil, from what I can see. Yeah, and she looked like she'd found her form actually in one yeah. of the later finals, yeah. uh, Blanca, in the, in the windier stuff actually. Windier stuff, okay. Okay, so we are going to get uh, 
tuned in as we speak. Have you ever did slalom before? Me? Yeah. Like indoor, ever, ever? indoor slalom world champion, mate. Ooh, someone <laughs> is being. Ooh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, I sh <laughs> I'm sorry, I mate. So. 20 seconds to go. <laughs> don't poke the beast. I don't poke the beast. I'm just, I'm just, I just, it was a, it was a Here we question. go. Let's line this up. <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds to go. Uh, we got Mario Mortifon down this ball, man. She's stuck with the foil. Uh, yep. Then we got Blanca Alabao just upwind on the red sail, having a little uh, tussle with Justine Lemetier. Lee. Oh, yeah, no. Two, one. Sarah Keita, great Perfect start. Perfect start, huh? In the middle of the Perfect fleet. Perfect start. Look at that. Yeah, no, she's looking very good here, Sarah Keita. Yeah. Off. Blanca. Blank. Ooh, she's pushing Blanca down. Yeah. But she needs to do it, otherwise. Gibson is still in the lead, no? Kind of. Gibson looking good. Okay, looking good. so I'm going to turn it on. Here we go. Gibson Motive. at the top has got plenty of power, and Gibson is powering it down as Serakita spins out. That is definitely going to give the edge to Gibson as Serakita is near and enough Mortifon on top of Marion Mortifon. But here comes Jenna Gibson from the Ooh. UK, powering down on top of all the women, and Gibson, with the wind increasing, has gone to the front of the fleet. Will she get her first win here in Fuerteventura? She Keep said it, it the other day. She is looking for the bullet. Marion Mortifon though. Great job from her on the outside. Sarah Keita on the inside. Blanca Alabao in fourth and then Justine Lemetier just place. behind. So the top five girls have already pulled out some decent mm -hmm. distant on the yes. chasing pack. But Jenna Gibson from the UK is doing what we know she can do. Yep. When the wind kicks in, she She's is one of the fastest though. women in the world. And she is absolutely flying right now it as we come into the second jibe mark. It's getting windier. Sarah Keita looking like she is challenging for second place now. We've got Marion Mortifon holding on at the moment, but surely it's just a matter of time before Sarah Keita pushes through. But Blanca also pushing Gibson, hard. Gibson first. Gibson round the outside on Mortifon the swell. Second. Good job from Gibson. All about third. Sarah Wide Keita's jibes, obviously, from the foil, and Sarah Keita goes inside. Expect to see a little move here from Sarah Keita. Yeah. We know she's been going better on the way out, though. The foils have been going better on the way in. But out in the lead, Jenna Gibson from the UK. Looking so, so she's clean. Flying, though. She's Two flying. Two jibe she's marks flying. to go. Three reaches to go. Can she get her first bullet? She's flying down here the reach. Here in Fuerteventura. <laughs> That's what she wants. She wants that bullet. She's had a tussle with Blanca Alabao. Alabao was getting, well, she got disqualified for dangerous sailing. Oh, really? There's a bit of beef. We know that. The rivalry has definitely increased. And she means business right now as we come into the penultimate mark. Two jive marks to go. Jenna Gibson Still looking on it. like keep she it is together. staring. Just keep it together. Keep a it together. It in the face. Mortifong in second. Alaba third. Oh, Sarah goes oh, down. Sarah Keita oh. went down hard. Oh, wow. She's Sarah she Keita is oh. not having a good day at the office right now. The wheels are coming off the Aruban wagon, and we have got plenty of racing still in this today. So the girls are eating into that lead uh, from Sarah Keita. She on, is still on, in the drink. Come but on, out Sarah. in front with one giant mark to go. Jenna it's Gibson it's from the leading. UK. She's still leading. Yes, look at Looking like she's gonna get okay, her. We have to keep it together, otherwise it will get something. Yeah, she is definitely. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, so ah, the last mark. Last mark the coming last in. Mark. Jenna Gibson's Jenna gone Gibson. very wide. She has gone so no, wide. Where is she going? No. Where is she going? As Marion Mortifon comes in the inside. Blanca oh, Alabao oh, and Marion no. Mortifon is now taking the lead. Oh. This women's fleet is absolutely oh. crazy. But we know Jenna oh. Gibson is one of the quickest women on the reach. Yeah, she's going she down reel she's, in? She's, going down she's having a good go she's now. Going down Jenna Gibson is going down down. But it's pretty tight this last and reach. Alan it might favour the foil. Also, no, Can uh. she do it? She's got a really oh. tough ass, but she's got speed. She has definitely got extra speed don't on Marion Mortifon. Don't Mortifer. go too far down with. Don't go too far down with. But can she make the finish don't line? Go she's giving it a good it. go. Jenny Gibson from the UK is powering down this reach. Mortifer. Has she got enough pressure I on the know. fin? She's coming. She is definitely she coming. It. She won't Can she, she get no. no? She can't oh. make it. She can't make it. Oh. She's not going to make, make it. it. Oh no, no. Marion Mortifon wins it. Blank no. Alabao in, in second. second. And Jenna Gibson has not made the finish. Oh. She wanted the win so much. She I let it that. all hang out. 
Sarah oh Collins Ford. Oh my life. Nice. And she is still missed. Justine Lemaitre goes through in third. Jenna Gibson has still not crossed the Sarah line. Sarah Ford. I, I wow. knew you don't have to she go so needed far to go so tight on that jive. Don't go too far down. Man. The other girls are rocking through right now. Yeah. And Jenna Gibson has still not crossed the line. She has to tack. She was complaining uh, the other day. The last reach was not good for the fin. Yeah, but... But she, she was low. Went, but she then, was low. But then she pushed to go down. And you don't go down. Man. Yeah, she wanted to win. She wanted to show she would got the speed. Here we yeah, go. Push her foot a bit more up. And, oh, how? From first to... To what? To six or seven? Six? From first to six, right? Wow. Oh... Oh my god. Wow, we're gonna have to another watch of that. Fresada went down and then Wow. Then she, oh. That was crazy. That was crazy though, yeah. I mean it was almost like she realized too late that too she late, wasn't yeah. gonna make it. Yeah. But she, I mean she definitely had the speed. If the, yeah. if that had been the angle of the finish, if it was a bit lower, yeah, but she had it. But she But she, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. And, but then then she also pushed too, like too much down, you know, and then you just missed that. Oh, She's mad for sure. I oh, think she's, she's super Keita, mad. That was that big yeah, crash on that jibe. Crash, yeah. She's not having a good day. She so she had a it. six in the first race. She's discarding it. Yeah, and then she has a five. So now? she no, she's discarding okay. eleven. So she's discarding a six. But now she'd have to count the six. Yeah. So she moves on to fifteen points. Marion Mortifon won it. Yeah. And then so Marion is only five points in it now. Which one more race like that for yeah. Sarah Keita? Another win for Mortifon. Mortifon straight in the lead. Wow, Did it's it's changing fast. So it's four, two, seven, five, four. I don't think so yet. Wow, Jenna Gibson, that was at the end. She tried to turn it up and spun out. I think she thought she could like hook it. You cannot. And it, well, the she board is can't. You're right. She cannot. <laughs> well, no, no. But I mean, e even me, if it's the, because the board is really narrow, yeah, you're gonna push too much to go in upwind. Yeah, I mean, there's a limit. Yeah, that you can push up in. You well, know, well, I think we just saw the limit. Yeah, you saw the limit. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we definitely I mean, saw the limit. It's pretty bad, but it is what it is. Wow, it's such a drama from first to to what to to six. I don't know where she finished in the end. Uh, okay, <laughs> first we've got runners-up final: Benedetti, Daldorf, Stallman, Mortifon. Mortifon. Wow, Kuzan, uh, Kuzan, Hooper, Hooper, uh, Berg, Bob, and Preen. Preen, we lost him at the start. Yeah. We, we lost him before the start. Crash? Yeah, before he crashed, the yeah, start. Started, yeah. We didn't even see him in the race. So Becker, Becker can do some, some moving. Damage. Some damage. Wow. <laughs> the Germans are coming. Yeah. Probably hit one of these um, these, these hammer sharks. <laughs> they, no, but there are hammer sharks here. Okay. We've got. I uh, saw them too. Yeah. We've got uh, an interview on the beach coming yes. up. Two one. Marion. Two from two now this morning. How is it out there? Uh, now it's quite windy. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing compared to the race before. I was completely overpowered, but managed to to be second at the first mark. And uh, Jenna went a bit wide at the last one, so I came inside. And it was quite hard to control uh, the foil, but uh, I managed to win the race. and super happy. What happened to Jenna at the end? Uh, I don't know. I think she she passed the line and then she fell down. But no, you actually won that one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know, but she missed the bottom mark. She didn't finish second. Ah. So I don't know. Uh, Sarakita uh, did the same uh, yesterday uh, or uh, two days uh, before. Uh, I think she was pointing a lot and maybe she went in out. I don't know. I really don't know. Good luck. Keep it up and yeah, have fun for the rest of the day. Thank you. Did she not know she won? Did that, is that what she just said? Who? Gibson. She didn't know she won. She said... I missed the two, end of that. She said, how did you feel about two, two, two times two? Okay, wow. She didn't I, know. I, I guess she probably not expect... Because she was probably upwind. Anyway, wow. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, some drama. It's definitely throwing up some drama. Ah, she knew she won, but Jenna, she didn't know Jenna didn't cross the line. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, yellow flags down. One minute to go. Hi, 
So who's your money on? Well, I mean... One, 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 one rider, not two riders, one rider. What's, who's your money on? Mortifon, Benedetti, Benedetti, maybe Preen. Preen. I'll go with Mortifon. Yeah, that's a good bet. Yeah. Maybe Benedetti. I don't know. He yeah, he's also he's there. definitely got some, something about him, this guy. Yes. Hooper could, with a bit of breeze, I think he's comfortable as well. So yeah. let's see. Uh, there's a lot of riders in this. Uh, Benedetti, Daldorf, Stallman, Mortifon, uh, Cousin, Hooper, Van der Berg, and Preen. Preen down this uh, far end on the Neil Pride. Then we've got Cousin just upwind of him. Benedetti a bit further back. And Mortifon has already uh, killing Benedetti's chances here. He's just squeezed over the top of him. Ooh, Hooper touchdown. looking very good as well. That's a bad start. And uh, look at Daldorf <laughs> on the fin up the top. Has he got a chance? On the fin. Maybe. Even on the fin. He loves it. Daldorf, there's a bit more breeze around now. And it is meant to pick up. There we go. We got that chase cam going going on it looks way more hectic on the chase cam but Daldorf is in the mix here and he's flying Abs he's really flying yeah absolutely flying it Preen looking good though at the moment in the front and we're going to get some serious breeze as we get into this first mark it gets a bit sketchy and Daldorf has just rolled nearly everyone apart from Nico Preen we'd expect him to go inside Nico Preen on this jive mark but it's going to be the German Nico Preen who's going to go round in first place then the Dutchman on the fin in second Benedetti has got a tight line here. He's going to squeeze out. Now he's going to squeeze inside. But Preen looking very, very comfortable. Can he hold it till the end? I with, think uh, he will. It's Daldorf. What, what about on the fin? Daldorf, Tati. He's on the 6 7. He is flying. Six, seven. I think he's got a chance here, you know. He looks really comfortable. He looks like he's got that board dancing over the chop. He's looking uh, He's looking ready for it. So Nico Breen needs to hold off a challenge from Daldorf. But Mortifon coming back on that upwind foil. But so is Benedetti. And they're getting squeezed here. Mortifon sails down on top of Daldorf. Benedetti comes underneath Daldorf. And they've totally ruined Daldorf's rhythm there as he came in. Good tactics from the other boys. Ooh. And uh, Daldorf has ended up getting uh, pushed yep. out a little bit. But Benedetti has got a chance here going against Pierre Mortifon. But out in front, Nico Preen, the biggest YouTube channel in windsurfing right now. 50,000 subscribers this bloke has. If you've not been following his videos, he I'd be very, lot. very surprised. That's a lot, man. He's doing a great job. Out in front. Can he hold it together? He Two will. jibe marks to go for the video. Bit of drama. He Maybe he needs to go in. <laughs> he will. He will go. He will go full on. So Nico Preen out in the lead. Second place is Mortifon, Mr. Consistent. Daldorf has not given up just yet, but it is still Nico Preen in first. Then we've got Pierre Mortifon. Great jibe from Pierre. Then Benedetti from Italy. And Mortifon is making a push here. And Nico Preen got super loose there. He lost he it a little bit. It. And Mortifon has capitalised. Mortifon has gone over the top of Preen after that little mistake from and Preen. just best him. Just he one just mistake. One mistake like that and open the door for Pierre Mortifon. Great move. It. Just great move. Mortifon looks so solid as we come into this last mark. The Frenchman has got the edge now as we've got one jive mark to go. Pierre Mortifon, solid as usual in first place. Surely he can't lose it from here. Second place, Nico Preen, then Benedetti. And it is going to be Preen. Preen's going to push him hard here. And Preen is having him. Preen is having a go. Preen has definitely not given up hopes of a win here in this runners-up final. Nico Preen is having a go, but Pierre Mortifon looks like he's got the measure of the German. Yeah. But we've seen it before. One touchdown, and it all starts going off. But Pierre Mortifon looks like he's got it solid now. He looks like he's got it under control. Nico Preen maybe has too much to do. And if he has, he'll shut off the gas. And I think he has already. Pierre Mortifon is going to win this runners-up final. So a ninth place for Pierre. Tenth place for Preen. Eleventh place for Benedetti. And then a close battle between... Uh, oh! Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Who was that on the gastra? Stolman. Stolman. Stolman went down. He had a bit of a fucking uh, bronco bucking at the end. A 14th place for Dal Daldorf. He finished sixth on the, on the fin. He plays in. Here we go. Replays. 
Talk us through the comp. Talk us through this. Say, have a look. Through, I didn't see. I was looking at the the whole race. So Daldorf. getting there, Daldorf was flying down with the fin. That, that, that's the thing. On the on the reach, you are okay, but on the jive, you lose so much, like so so much space. Like every jive, you lose space. So then, even if you're if you're first, and then one one of the guys goes on the inside on the foil, you are down. You know, and going to the second mark. This is the third, second mark. I'm just having a look, actually. The third. Yeah, thi this this is when watch when three when now. He went even too too far downwind. Well, Piero went up with and then he just squeezed him down. He squeezed, but watch the watch watch Nico. Did the, a the touchdown? Ah, uh, it's before that. There was, there was a little touchdown. I think he even unhooked. Yeah. And then um, and Mortifon just was so solid. And probably he get this perfect win that he just pushing him to ac accelerate faster. Because sometimes when you have this this little gas, which is lighter than the other one, when you go overpowered. With the foil, with the little gust, you, you go faster than when you have this he with this he heavy wind, you know? Yeah, and that, then that was just, he just uh, by lifted, him, yeah. By, by, by himself, yeah. <laughs> the, wind, the wind came out. <laughs> the wind came out. So I told you, Pierre, Pierre will win it. You were Ooh, right. I'm so lucky today. You were right. I'm so lucky today. Okay. So having him winning, huh? Okay, so we got an interview with Bobby Lynn, youngest competitor in the competition. I'm here with Bobby Lynn, 13 year old from Bonaire, the youngest competitor here in Fuerteventura. How was that last race for you? Oh wow, I went out with my 5'6 and I was fully overpowered. I was just like on survival mode, hoping not to fall and yeah, it was really cool, but I was so overpowered and it was really choppy. <laughs> How was it when you had to go yeah, round some of the other competitors? Is oh. that? Yeah, I saw them fall for like really big rushes. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to fall. <laughs> and I was like, make the big circle around them. But yeah. What's the little scar on your face from? So yeah, I uh, like like a few days before the race started, I made a massive catapult and fell with my face on my mast. So yeah. <laughs> Hardcore. Okay, so Good luck for the rest of the day and have fun. Uh, thank you. There we go. We love to see that future of the sport. She is a happy girl. You probably Good. know her, Tay. Good. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was in the <laughs> other the zone. Okay. But yeah, Bobby Lynn. Bobby Lynn. From Bonaire. She's sailing air every day. Every day. She does winging, she does solemn. She's, she's just every day on the water. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. She's the next star. She's definitely the next, next star. She yes, seems super sure she hyped as well. We sure love that. Is. Okay, yeah. final coming up in 30 seconds. Goya, Rakowski, Vriespike, Martini, So, Yakino, Marotti, Becker. Becker needs a good result here. He will fly up the rankings. Martini, a good result from him. He will move up as well. Johan So, trying to keep that lead. Nicholas Goya, trying to take the lead back. Here we go. Let's get into it. Matteo Yakino down this bottom end. End. Then we've got Nicholas Goya just upwind of him. We've got Amado Vriespike in the channel here, but Bruno Martini is pushing in the middle. Bruno Martini has absolutely nailed that start, but upwind of him is that uh, Enrico Marotti. Marotti is getting it together today. The beast is just further upwind. Look at that speed from, from Nico. Yeah, there we go. But look at that from Marotti. Isn't that He's Marotti? Flat. Enrico Marotti is absolutely devastating right now in the front. Nico down this bottom end. Who is going to go into the first mark in first place? We've got Johan So absolutely beasting as usual. Who is going to lead? This is going to be so close into this first mark. It might even favour some of the guys further back. Here we go. Straight in. It's going to be Marotti rounding first. Oh, slips it in the inside. Is Nico, oh, yeah. then the beast comes round. Amado with a great jibe. Oh, it's uh, Rakowski, sorry. Rakowski with a great jibe. The Polish rider, Maciek Rakowski, current tour leader, is back in the game. And Enrico Marotti oh, yeah, yeah. squeezes really? it up as Amado okay, has a little really. moment there. This is some super tight racing. Have they all forgot about Nicolas right. Goya? We haven't here in the commentary. And look at Bruno Martini making a move in the low. The the oh man, this you. is going to be absolutely yeah, insane as we limit. come into this mark. It's going to be Enrico. But look at Bruno, he's going direct. Bruno is going off on his own angle. It's going to be Enrico Marotti rounding first. 
Then okay, we've got Matt go. Chetrakovsky. Oh, no, then Bruno, Bruno, and it's all hectic. Oh, oh the Marotti's gone. Marotti's gone. Oh, Chetrakovsky, oh, 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 oh. and they've all gone. Who's still standing? I tell you, who's still standing? The beast is still standing. Nicholas Goya is still standing. Rakowski's still standing. Bruno is still standing. And so is. Is that Amado Freespike? No, or is he that went Mateo Yakino? Ma uh, Amado went down. Okay, and Mateo Yakino right. still going. Matt Czech Rakowski back on it. But here comes Nicholas Goya. Yeah, Nicholas Goya Phil. fighting it out with the beast. The Nico's got the inside line. Like as we come into the second now. to last giant mark. Oh, here we go. Here. As we come in, it's going to be Matt Czech. Matt Czech no, still no, holding Matt on to Czech first. first. Matt Nicholas first. Goya into second. Goya second. The beast coming so through sweet. on the inside. Man, this couldn't get any tighter. Bruno oh. in fourth place. Then we've got Mattel Yakino, consistent as ever. But oh, Nicholas no, Goya, is he making his move right now? I have a feeling Nicholas Goya is making his move. Just has a little touchdown. He's going underneath the reigning world champion and current tour leader. And Nicholas Goya is pushing Matt he Czech here. Nicholas Goya know, is pushing Matt Czech, Czech and he has himself. just rolled underneath. Underneath Matt Czech Rakowski, the beast has still got his eye on Nicholas Goya. Yeah, One giant mark to go as Last Nicholas Goya night. takes so the lead. He did this yesterday he and he was Goya not Goya safe. Goya Will he do it again? Great drive from Matt Czech Rakowski on the inside the now. Leg, the but Nicholas leg. Goya surely Move has aside. this. We know he's got the speed, but Matt Czech is not letting up. The beast is still in and third. Bruno Martini in fourth place. Oh, Nico Nico had a little touchdown and Matt Czech is still gaining. Gonna this is going to come Rokowski. right down and another little touch no, from Nico. Maciek Rakowski has got the speed. Goya, He's going Goya, high. Maciek is going high, but Nico coming back now. Nico is coming like back and it looks like he's going to get this. Nicholas like Goya has managed to keep Goya. it up. Can he keep it's it up like, all the way like, to the line? He does. Nicholas Goya will take the seventh elimination and the event lead. Maciek Rakowski in second. The Beast in third. Slips to second in the overalls. Matteo Yakino in fourth, followed by Bruno Martini, the two Italians. Where's Becca? Where's Marotti? There. Marotti coming through now. Six, Amado coming through seven, now, and Becca's going to be eight. eighth. Wow, Tati. Did you see the speed of Nico going to the last mark? Wow. Here we go. Let's have a look at the replays. From Tati, talk oh, us through it. I cannot it. talk you through it. I cannot talk you through it. This one, I cannot talk you through okay, it. Okay, so, okay, let's Ooh. look at it. We, we Marotti. I'm only. And what is happening to him? He's got the speed, but I think this the one. confidence has gone. Oh. He was leading. He looked so good. Oh, look at Nico there. He had a real nasty touchdown there and actually put him further back. But this is the moment. Marotti and Rakowski. Wow. Even, but even a mother had like, like two times to touch touchdown. Let's slow down this mark because a lot was happening here. It's hard to digest it. So Amado was coming in. And Rico went down. And then, oh, and Rico went and down Johan, hard. The beast, uh, Matchek had to go low. Oh, yeah. And so I think Amado avoided uh, Matteo and then he... Matteo had to go on the inside yeah. and Amado had to try and avoid him. Wow. Can we have another look at that? Is it possible to rewind it straight? Because that there's a lot going on at that jibe mark. It's hard to take it all in. Wow. From what I, I can see is that Amado was now. avoiding to hit uh, Matteo. Yeah. So Ma Marotti so, goes yeah. down. Okay, Rakowski had to go. Bruno coming really. The Nico's there. Okay, and then the Matteo. <laughs> yeah. And then. So I think he was trying to, to avoid to hit on Matteo. So Amado went down. Yeah. And then. So wow. <laughs> that was hectic. Wow. I mean, it's interesting. Nico looked like he knew he could still. He still had that extra bit of speed. Down to the to the last mark. Yeah, the he second, went, the second. Like he went downwind and then just go ahead of everybody. Yeah, he's he's like got he's, how confident. He's got that extra speed, hasn't he? Which is scary at this level to have that extra speed. This is how far he actually came out of the jibe behind Matchek, and by the end he was that far ahead. Then yeah. Matchek did a sick jibe there, and I thought we were on. There was a little moment in between where Nico touches down. Yeah. All right. But it wasn't much. To be probably, fair. probably because of the angle, you don't really see it. What happened? Okay. We definitely we were getting interviews, and there was a lot. Let's see. We got Goya on the beach. Let's go and have a quick chat with him. See what he's got to say. Three, two, one. 
Nico Goya winning that one, yeah. snatching it on the last drive. How was it? That was really sick. Like, it was really windy. It, every minute before start it was oh. gradually increasing, increasing, increasing. And I got it all. I didn't have the best start. I was still there, but not the best start for sure. And I managed to come back like a lot after the second drive. <laughs> <laughs> after the second drive, and it was like a really good fight. My check didn't see me below after outside the third drive, and I just went full for it, and it was a uh, really good, really good. Last time you won an event, it was an easy win in Israel. What's different this time? Uh, the level is much tighter than before. Uh, and on this race, I was using the same gear as the others. I was not cheating, <laughs> but using smaller wings, smaller stage, so I was just with the same gear. And uh, it, was, it was tough. And also, the wind was really strong, really gusty, but amazing fight. You're now in the lead of the event, if I'm right. Uh, do we attack or do we defend from this point? Uh, I would just take race by race. And the thing is, everything happens in each race, so you just focus on the race, the next hit, the next jibe, the next second, and you just do it like that. You don't. We, are, we still have probably like four or five races to go, so it's not the time to think about defending or not. Good luck for the rest of the event. So there you go, Nico Goya. And it looked like those two had a really good battle. Maybe we're going to have a chat with Maciek Rakowski as well now by the looks of it. Um, he's down there, the camera's there, it makes sense. So uh, stay tuned. I think we're going to be going to Maciek Rakowski on the beach. He's just got to do his hair. Yeah, let's go. Maciek, Nico took you on the last race, uh, last reach. What happened? Yeah, actually, he overtook me on the way out. I jibe quite wide because I, I know kind of my strengths and my weaknesses. I know that going really broad downwind is maybe not my best. So I jibe quite wide to make it a little bit tighter because I know that I can defend somebody when he's on my hip. But I didn't expect him to go even wider and, and take the inside. And when I realized, it was too late. So I pushed and pushed him and tried to cut back. And I had actually a good jibe. And then as I sheeted in, the board touched down and he gained like a board length for two. And then all I can do is push and hope for him to, to touch. And he didn't touch on the last reach. So yeah, but it was, it was fun. For the next race, we're adding two more jibe marks. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's going to be exciting for sure. I mean, it's, it's tough to jibe as it is. But uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Good luck. There we go. News to me that adding two more jibe marks. Yeah, there will be like six six jibes. Wow. But if shorter reaches, yeah. longer. Shorter reaches. Did you hear what he what he said? Nico said he's using smaller wings than everybody else. Yeah. So that gave him that little bit of edge to get more 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 speed, and then you know. Yeah. Kind of like you get like one one two knots faster. I mean, so no uh, you know, why you for the event, it's. It's obviously a disadvantage for the riders, but a lot of them, like I said the other day, Maciek will be looking at him. He's not in the overall race. No. So him winning, it's not such a big deal. No, no, no. You know, for the overall race. So if you're finishing second to Nico, it's like a win, yes, almost. Yes, yes. I would say, if you're up there. It's not good if you're further back, because it pushes you even further back, and maybe it ends up being your discard. Yes. But we're going to have a look at the overalls now, because the beast has definitely slipped from the top. Uh, Nicholas Goya... No, will take the lead now. Oh yeah? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm I'm positive of that. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So uh Nicholas Goya is in fact in the lead now 8.8 .8 points. And I tell you what, you might have a shock who's in fourth place and who's in third because there has been some <gasps> movements. Yes. No way. Yes. <laughs> so, like we said there will be some like, movements what? today. Young you so right has dropped to second, 11.7 .7 points. Then we've got Maciek Rakowski with that second place has moved him up into third. So, solid. But who is in fourth? Michael Becker. Michelle I didn't Becker. Expect this. I tell Michelle you. Becker is up into fourth. I was uh, expecting this, I tell you the truth. But Told you. you. Yeah. It's, it's, he's got some big discards. He can't afford any mistakes. But then... But then the, the movement is like a mother went from third to, to fifth, so it's, it's like a, it's like a big movement in that. There is a but. There are equal points. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yes. So Michelle Becker so is in fourth, but Amado Vriesweik and Matteo Yakino are level points, all of them. 22 oh, yes. points, all three riders. So it's actually equal fourth. 
So Michelle Becker, Amado Vriesweig, Matteo Iacchino are all equal fourth place. But I think from like the eighth to the fourth, they can still m yeah. make big move. And depends who does. Like yeah, Bruno Martini's moved up into seventh, and yeah. he's only four or five points back. Yeah. Um, same as Pierre Mortifon, he's pretty much equal with Bruno, just yeah. point seven behind. So th that's crazy. But the the battle for the podium, you know, Matt checks on let's say twenty points. Then yeah. it's twenty two points, twenty two points, twenty two points, and then twenty seven, twenty seven. So yeah. it's so tight, so tight. Unless, um, unless we get to the to the third um, the discard, then you will see probably bigger changes. No? Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Well, well, we'll have to see what happens within the within races the races, within. Yeah. Yes. Um, like I said, in the women, Sarah Keita on 13 points. Mary Mortifon closed the gap to seven points now, which doesn't, which seems like a lot. But if she was to win the next one and Sarah Keita's outside the top six, the the, the points would be down to one. So, you know, that's a lot of ifs. Yeah, yeah. And there is more win now. So, anyway, we're going to take a break. Uh, massive thanks to Tati for joining that's me amazing. in the commentary booth. That, that was some results. exciting racing. That was exciting racing, too. Yeah, exciting yeah. racing. That's how we like it. Um, let's see. Tati France is in this competition. I am competing, yeah. He is competing, but, but he's on the fin. And so as we've seen, you need more wins. It's a bit difficult to, yeah, to race when it's like light wind. Yeah. On, on, unless win. I have my 6-0 still, then it could be a more chance to be in the, in the top four too. But until now, it's, it's still light wind. Yeah. Uh, so next elimination will be elimination eight. Um, what is the, the call? Let's just have a look. Um, elimination eight starting at 2.15. So we've got half an hour, half an hour. until the next start. Don't go too away. far away. 30 <laughs> minutes. This guy will be in action. It's yeah. getting windy. So, we will, you know, and no I pressure. No Come pressure. on. I have no pressure. You see me with pressure? Deliver. Deliver. I want to see you deliver. I, I want some I pressure. Will, I, will, I will deliver to you. Okay. All right. See you in a bit. Half an hour. Later. See you soon.
un gesto puede despertar tu felicidad. Podemos sentir amor a través de una fragancia. Un pequeño detalle tiene un valor incalculable. ¿Y si pudiéramos despertar el alma de las cosas poniendo toda nuestra pasión, todos nuestros sentimientos en ello? Bienvenido al lugar donde todo tiene alma. Melia Hotels and Resorts. Soul Matters. Welcome to Soda Vento. It's the ultimate water sports playground with loads of space for everybody. We offer the latest rental gear. Our professional courses will help you improve your style and writing technique. And with the hotels nearby, it's only a few meters from the bed to the board. Come and enjoy our water sports paradise. a secret. Beaches, beaches, and more beaches. Wild and unspoiled nature. Ventura is my secret. Shh. Here, everything is designed with you in mind. From our distinctive private areas to our most privileged suites, where light and colors evoke a distinctive sense of peace. Step into another world with the level. Book now, Melia.com. del reloj. En esta isla no hay plazos, sino momentos. Esta es la isla de los horizontes y tu única tarea, coleccionar atardeceres, pasar tiempo con los tuyos, contar estrellas fugaces. Puedes estar aquí en un instante y saborear la quietud de sus días. Llenar esos días de historia, 
Un cielo azul sin límite, donde el mar es puerta y no barrera. Que guía tus pasos a lugares recónditos, siguiendo el arrullo de las olas. Haz las maletas. La isla quiere que vuelvas. Fuerteventura, abierto todo el año. Puerto Ventura World Cup looks back on a long tradition. World speed records in windsurfing have been set. Legendary slalom races held. And freestyle world champions have been crowned. In kiteboarding, we have seen hang time records. We have seen incredible strapless tricks. as well as exhilarating kiteboarding freestyle world championships. And just like the sporting part of the event, the evening parties have become legendary. For the 35th anniversary, windsurfers will compete in the disciplines of freestyle and slalom with men and women alike as part of the PWA World Tour. For the first time, the wing foilers of the GWA World Tour will carry out their competitions at the Fuerteventura World Cup. They will also compete in two disciplines, free fly slalom and surf freestyle.
Un gesto puede despertar tu felicidad. Podemos sentir amor a través de una fragancia. Un pequeño detalle tiene un valor incalculable. ¿Y si pudiéramos despertar el alma de las cosas poniendo toda nuestra pasión, todos nuestros sentimientos en ello? Bienvenido al lugar donde todo tiene alma. Meliao Chelsea Resorts, Soul Matters. Welcome to Soda Vento. It's the ultimate water sports playground with loads of space for everybody. We offer the latest rental gear. Our professional courses will help you improve your style and riding technique. And with the hotels nearby, it's only a few meters from the bed to the board. Come and enjoy our water sports paradise. a secret. Beaches, beaches, and more beaches. Wild and unspoiled nature. Ventura is my secret. Shh. Here, everything is designed with you in mind. From our distinctive private areas to our most privileged suites, where light and colors evoke a distinctive sense of peace. Step into another world with the level. Book now, melia.com. del reloj. En esta isla no hay plazos, sino momentos. Esta es la isla de los horizontes y tu única tarea, coleccionar atardeceres, pasar tiempo con los tuyos.
contar estrellas fugaces. Puedes estar aquí en un instante. Y saborear la quietud de sus días. Llenar esos días de historia. Un cielo azul sin límites. Donde el mar es puerta y no barrera. Que guía tus pasos a lugares recónditos. Siguiendo el arrullo de las olas. Haz las maletas. La isla quiere que vuelvas. Fuerteventura. Abierto todo el año. Puerto Ventura World Cup looks back on a long tradition. World speed records in windsurfing have been set. Legendary slalom races held. And freestyle world champions have been crowned. In kiteboarding, we have seen hang time records. We have seen incredible strapless tricks. as well as exhilarating kiteboarding freestyle world championships. And just like the sporting part of the event, the evening parties have become legendary. For the 35th anniversary, windsurfers will compete in the disciplines of freestyle and slalom with men and women alike as part of the PWA World Tour. For the first time, the wing foilers of the GWA World Tour will carry out their competitions at the Fuerteventura World Cup. They will also compete in two disciplines, free fly slalom and surf freestyle.
Un gesto puede despertar tu felicidad. Podemos sentir el amor a través de una fragancia. Un pequeño detalle tiene un valor incalculable. Y si pudiéramos despertar el alma de las cosas poniendo toda nuestra pasión, todos nuestros sentimientos en ello. Bienvenido al lugar donde todo tiene alma. Meliao Chelsea Resorts, Soul Matters. Welcome to Soda Vento. It's the ultimate water sports playground with loads of space for everybody. We offer the latest rental gear. Our professional courses will help you improve your style and riding technique. And with the hotels nearby, it's only a few meters from the bed to the board. Come and enjoy our water sports paradise. a secret. Beaches, beaches, and more beaches. Wild and unspoiled nature. Ventura is my secret. Shh. Here, everything is designed with you in mind. From our distinctive private areas to our most privileged suites, 
where light and colors evoke a distinctive sense of peace. Step into another world with the level. Book now, melia.com. Okay, welcome back. Red flag is up and we are going into sequence for Elimination 8. Um, also got a new co-commentator. We got Dieter van der Eiken in the house and we're going to have a look, I guess, through some results as we do this. So, as I said, Nico Goya has moved up into first place now, 8.8 .8 points. Uh, Johan So with that second discard, 11.7. So still super close at the top, pretty much three points in it. Um, and then there's a bit of a gap to Rakowski in third place. So a good day for the Polish rider today and he's backed up into third place and just goes to show how close this is. Look at that. Michelle Becker, Amado Riesweik and Matteo Iacchino all level on 22 points. Fourth place. Crazy. I was a bit surprised when I saw uh, the results but uh, I guess the second discard kicked in so that made a big, big difference. Yeah. And on the women, uh, Offringer has actually not had a good day today. I think she might have even used both of her discards uh, in the same day. No, she's did she have a four and a six? Oh, she got back with a fourth. Okay, interesting. Just looking. Uh, but yes, 13 points. So still good way ahead. And with the wind picking up, you'd expect her to put in a couple of uh, decent ones this afternoon. Mortifon uh, in Priesta lead in second. Lamatier into third. But we have a change on the course. Yes, we do. We have six boy slalom. Two extra marks added. Some shorter legs are from the first and the, the second one and then the normal slalom course from then on. Dieter, what do you think? Pretty good for the foils, I would say. <laughs> A bit less good for the fins, but... Uh, well, maybe not. I was saying yeah. this, actually, because the foils do wider jibes. Ah, it depends how windy it is. If it's windy, windy, maybe it's a slight advantage, but you have to keep it together on the fin. You cannot afford any mistake, and that is obviously hard. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it will be a little bit better for the the foil uh, because it is a little bit more patchy. Uh, maybe even if they come out wide, they can quite easily point upwind again. Uh, but let's see. I mean, it's cool that they try something new, and uh, hopefully maybe tomorrow the forecast is even windier. Maybe they do the opposite. Less jibes, longer reaches uh, to make it a bit more fin. F uh, how should I say? Better for the fin. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, He's, we, we have heard, local knowledge tells us it's going to be windy this afternoon. It's going to increase uh, as the day goes on. It's already pretty offshore, and Dieter Reliby tells me that offshore means probably windier. So let's wait and see what we get. Uh, just lining up for the first heat of this Elimination 8. We've got Bord, Kurnum, Schoberg, Everard, Kudo, uh, Vorenberg, Pettifer and Van der Heuvel. And there we go. We are cruising in right now. Just try and pick out who is everybody. We've got board down this bottom end on the Severn. It looks like on the Gastra we have got um, Kudo maybe, yeah, from Japan. On the top, uh, Van Heuvel on the fin. Yeah, Van der Heuvel right at the top end. Maybe it's a good tactic up there. Board just getting out of the way on that bottom bit. And we've got Kurnum 
We've also got Everard from Belgium. And uh, it's actually Van Hoogel looking pretty solid at that top end, Bob. Yeah, it's not Bob, it's... Uh, no, it's not Bob. Thomas. Which is Bob, Bob's Van der Berg. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, they're on the same board, same sail, so... You can see how offshore it is. Look at the angle they are they're coming in at. So we should be getting some big old gusts coming through. It's going to be interesting. Kudo looking good on the on the Gastra, but it is Cedric Bord who goes round in first. Van der Hoevel in uh, second. Then we've got uh, Kudo. Then we've got uh, Kurnum on that uh, foil down the bottom. Then uh, Schoberg from Sweden looking pretty good actually. Yeah. Van der Hoevel on the fin. I say, will it help? This is a shorter leg. Look how short it is. Quite nice, actually. Yeah. Quite interesting how quickly that came about. And again, will it favour the fin? You never know. Obviously, it doesn't look like it favoured him just there, but no. we'll have to wait and see. How I mean, he could stay. sneak ahead just before, so he's still yeah. in third. Maybe it's a little bit more comfortable because he's obviously not on the foil, but we know yeah. this is how it's working. So a real short second leg and then straight into this next leg. This is the first round, first time we get to see this six mark course in action. But you've got to be so on it with your jibing. Doing a good job, Thomas, though. Yeah, definitely. Would he like more jibes? He's quite a small rider, he's not the biggest, is he? Oh, he's pretty solid, but compared, no, but I mean, to, compared to like <laughs> some of the big boys I'm talking. Yeah, um, maybe. For a freestyler, he's pretty big, but compared to Amado, who is also a freestyler, <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's not as big, that's for sure. Yeah, there are definitely a lot more bigger guys out there, but it uh, seems like he's doing good. He's in third now. The foils actually didn't catch up. I think it all comes down how good of a jiper's there on the foil. You see some guys having a bit of a sketchy jipe, and uh, maybe on the fins they're a bit more secure. Let's see. In the next round, I think we will see very well whether it's beneficial or not. Oh, we're about to see now because he's getting smoked a little bit on that last jive, and that's the problem. Everard coming out, but he can go a little bit lower. We saw with Jenna Gibson earlier. There's still she two jibes. didn't Jibes, make the finish. There's still two jibes to go. Because yeah, there's two more jibes. I thought that was six. I can't count. I'm such a terrible counter. That's it. I mean, how it is longer, isn't it? Wow. It's quite a bit longer. A lot more can happen. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Ah, that's the finish, isn't it? No. No. They're still coming here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. My, oh, this is going to be t tough for me. <laughs> exactly. It's going to take quite a bit longer, uh, the course. Yeah. Just when they feel like they are getting a bit knackered, chucking yeah. a longer course. Like you say, is it gonna? Who's it gonna benefit? Be interested to see who it benefits. I guess if you're quick and you come down, like uh, it might might change. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but I mean, so far, like in the beginning, it was doing okay, and actually, on the longer reaches, he's been having a harder time. So maybe on some of the guys of the fins, it will be better. But I'm a bit afraid it will be better for the foils. Yeah. Uh, the wind did drop off a bit. So it does, yeah. Uh, that doesn't definitely doesn't help for the fins. Uh, well, board has just gone round the last mark in first place. Then we've got uh, Kernum, then we've got Schoberg, and then Everard, and then Hoovel, Van der Hoovel, just going through. But you can see he's underpowered coming out of that mark. It's not that he's got loads of power. So maybe it's just a little bit early for that wind to come through. Yeah, I mean, there's some few clouds starting to form but uh, let's see it's uh it did kick in pretty strong so maybe with the lower tide it gets stronger gets more choppy then though so still a drag race but yeah uh, i don't see the top four changing sadly enough i'm a bit of a thomas fan he's a very nice guy but then uh, everett has been doing very well it's up into third now Yeah, the legs are still pretty long. I thought it might actually, with six jibes, I thought they were going to make the legs quite a lot shorter. Yeah, no. I think they just added two buoys and the, the lower part stayed exactly the same. And actually, okay. Thomas is having a hard time making that bottom mark. I mean, he did went very deep to try and uh, squeeze out some extra, but let's see. Uh, women are yep. now? Should be. 
Okay. Yeah, I thought I actually thought the legs were going to be quite like the first, the second leg. Yeah. I thought we'd have quite a longish first leg coming in, and then a couple of short ones. Yeah. And then maybe yeah. the last two were longer, but. Like I say, we'll have to wait and see how it goes out. And there's a few people saying here, I'm surprised they can change it in the middle of the competition, but that's what we want to see. We want to see sailors adapting to different conditions. It's still downwind slalom. And you know, and we haven't done this for years, so it's quite nice, I think, to, to mix it up. And we want to see which sailors can adapt. You know, yep. that, that's, what, that's what it's all about. You know, we want to get the best sailor. Well, I'm excited anyway, just to see how it plays out. I think that's just how it goes. But yeah. Maybe the, maybe the legs are pretty long, though. That that's that that's and it. it's like very short, and then maybe very long. Like if the last ones are a little bit shorter, might be better. Yeah. Uh, but I, they're gonna do this elimination, and then they can change it again. Yeah. So I think in in foiling we saw a lot of changing of courses yeah. when it was developing. So. And that's the, the thing. This is. I mean, I don't want to kill it here, but this is going to become a foiling slalom tour. Like, you can see it now. This is still early days, and already the foil is dominating. So we have to look at that, and then you will see different courses coming up, which Finns cannot do. Um, anyway, women's slalom coming up. Sarah Keita needs to get back on track. That is for sure. She's not had a good day so far. Uh, but maybe she can get it together in this one. 50 seconds to go. Justine Lamartier. And we've got more jibes for the women as well. You know, who will that favour? We're about to find out. Maybe it's going to put pressure on Sarah Keita. She's been good jibing. Uh, maybe it actually for her evens it out. The, 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 the problem is as soon as you get into a wind gust on the fin, you can be a good jiber. You still can kind of get stuck behind. So... Yeah, let's see. Um, uh, it's interesting that they try something different as yeah. well. There's, otherwise. A, well. There's quite a lot of women on the fin looking at this. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Davico on that loft sail in the front at the moment. We've got Sarah Keita off Ringer down here on the Neil Pride. Then just upwind of her, Jenna Gibson. Um, we've got the challenger sail of uh, Benedict. Well, we're missing a few, aren't we? I think a few are at the pin. Which we don't see. Oh, okay. I was going to say, it looks like we're missing Blanca Alabao, uh, Marion Mortifon. Well, they must have had a very bad start. They're not in the screen. Well, we don't see them, do we? Unless they're really far down. But it looks like Jenna Gibson and Sarah Keita off Ringer powering down through this top ah. end. Oh, there we go. There we go. So then we've got all three riders. We've got Blanca Alabao, Marion Mortifon and uh, Justine Lemetier right down this bottom end. Jenna Gibson and uh, Sarah Keita off Ringer, though, are going to come out. Um, fourth and fifth coming into this first mark. It's going to be Marion Mortifon, is it? No, no Blanca, Blanca Alabao. First so and um, Marianne. And then Jenny Gibson in third place. So Marion Mortifon, Jenny Gibson. Then um, Sarah Keita back in fifth place. Justine Lemetier down that bottom end. This one's a short leg. And it's straight into another jibe for the foils. We can see Jenny Gibson bouncing around. Sarah Keita as well coming in with a really tight line. She's actually done better here. Sarah Keita. Oh, he gets a bit stuck on the chop. She's managed to save it. Very, very interesting. She actually looked like she'd gained loads of ground, but then got a little bit stuck as Blanca Alabao takes the lead ahead of Marion Mortifon. I usually know how many jibe marks to go at this point, but... Yeah, there's four. still four <laughs> to go, yeah. It's like this would be the first jibe. Yeah. Basically. So Blanca rounding first. Could she get a win here? Marion Mortifon second. Then we've got... Justine Lemetier, Sarah Keita Offringer, and uh, Jenna Gibson at the moment. Yeah, at the moment they're getting a little bit stuck on the fins, but it's hard to tell if it's the course or if it's the wind that yeah. clearly wind, did drop a bit. The wind definitely looks like it hasn't kicked. It was looking like it was kicking and it hasn't kicked, but Blanca Alabao doing her best to put a bullet on the score sheet here. Race number 12, apparently. Wow, they have flown by. So third discard coming in at this point. Yeah, they already have. 11 is third discard already, no? Uh, 12. 12, okay. Yeah. So Blank around in first. Marion Mortifon second. Still in contention. Justine Lamartier. And Sarah Keita is not going away just yet. It looks like those jibes have maybe hindered Jenna Gibson's 
run. Oh yeah, I think she crashed in on the last tribe. At the moment, the foils have got it, but we know there's a couple of big legs to go. We also know that last leg isn't that fin friendly. No. Nope. But Sarah Keita is doing her best to catch him here. Blanca Alabao at the moment in the front of the fleet. Marion Mortifon, second place. Then Justine Lemetier is actually eating up a little bit of distance between yeah. Marion Mortifon. So maybe Justine is going to have a chance here as we come into the uh, penultimate jibe mark. Blanca Alabao needs to keep it together. Pretty solid jibe. Not the best, though. And Marion Mortifon has definitely Straight closed down. in here. Marion Mortifon has took some ground out of uh, Blanca Alabao as Sarah Keita makes a nice jibe in the background as she pumps her way into fourth place. Justine Lemetier, I know she has not given up just yet and she's going low. Justine Lemetier is absolutely flying down low and maybe creeping up on the top two riders. Keep your eye on the French girl down there on the left of your picture because she has gone a way more direct route into this last jibe mark as Blanca Alabao still leads but Marion Mortifon making a move on the inside cutting into an overlap and she's going to get it no she's not she backs off she backs off does the fade fades out Mary Mortifon coming in tight then Justine Lamatier it's going to be a great race down this last reach any touchdowns and Sarah Keita is coming back I'm sure it's too little too late for Sarah Keita but Marion Mortifon has definitely found some speed and she is just rolling blank at Alabao Marion Mortifon has been taking her time biding her time all the way through this race and she has now put the move on Blanca Alabao and the French woman will maybe close the gap well she will close the gap on Sarah Keita off Ringer there is a third discard coming in who will that affect the most I'll need to do some checking but Marion Mortifon has found some speed today on day four and she is absolutely flying so Marion Mortifon has found the extra speed she needed and she has put another win on the board, there we go. Mortifon gets it. Blanca Alabao second, close behind Justine Lemetier, and then fourth place is Sarah Keita off Ringer. They've left the other girls in their way, haven't they? They really Definitely. have. Jenna Gibson is quite far back. I think she's been, yeah, maybe a little bit underpowered. The wind dropped off a bit, and uh, yeah, very good comeback from Mortifon. She kind of. Kept her cool, waited till the last try, basically, and then uh, got it done. Okay, have a look at some replays. It looked good for Jenna at the beginning. Looked like she had a good start, good speed. But actually, as they came into that first mark, it was all the foilers, actually, that came out um, right there. Jenna was going round in third, but it was a tight old jibe that she had to do. And by mark number two, we already saw, like, Sarah Keita throwing it in there and just caught that rail. If she may have got away then, we might have seen something a little bit different. That was when we lost a couple of the riders at that last jibe mark. Yeah. Not sure what happened to Jenna. It must have been on this jibe mark, I maybe. I think she crashed two jibes. I was keeping a little bit uh, an eye on her, and I think she only came in as seventh. Okay. So uh, I think she crashed on the last out jibe as well. So Look at that. That was where the, the business end happened. That made her move, Marion Mortifon. She did a little fakey before the, the bomb mark, then headed up, and then cut inside Blanca on the last mark. We've seen uh, Becca do that, you know, with quite some... Uh, yeah, with some good outcomes, really. He's done, he sort of goes in low, comes up high, cuts in close, and then accelerates out. And he's done really well out of that move. Uh, quite a few races now. Okay. May maybe the foil likes that a bit more, like your wave riding. You sometimes yeah. also have to go on your heel, then on your toe. Maybe yeah, and just get that fresh. Exactly, fresh. and it just gets that grip, yet like accelerates you not too much. While if you go in a straight line and then maybe the, the foil is thinking, I still want to go ahead. So maybe yeah. it is good to actually go on your heel and then actually give you a bit more grip, like they would say. It is interesting. You do it a fuller turn yeah. rather than a half turn. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so you can exactly. actually get on the rail and press off it. Exactly. I mean, off the foil rail, yeah. whatever the terminology is for that. Exactly. <laughs> off, off the pressure of it. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Actually, very interesting because it's definitely been working. We've seen it happen quite a lot. Okay, first of the quarterfinals coming up Marotti, Benedetti, So, Daldorf, Del Pont, Giroux, and uh, it will be Bored. Oof. Strong uh, one. Yeah. 
I mean, Borders actually maybe has an advantage now because he has done the course already. Maybe some guys, like, you're so used to the same course, if you're suddenly in the lead and you're like, uh, yeah. where do I have to go now? I'll be honest, I like it. Just to add a little bit of freshness, Michelle Becker, in case anyone wondered what he looked like, he's got like a go-karting uh, whiplash uh, brace on. Yeah, it's not that bad from the, with the crashes I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I can say maybe Marotti might need one because he's had some. I think he started with it. Okay. Pretty okay, sure. Okay, that would make sense. Or either Becker started with it. Marotti was using it in winter in the training for sure. Uh, I don't know if he's still using it now. But uh, yeah, I think. Uh, let's see how long. Yeah, it's definitely getting a bit more foolish again. I'm afraid. I think uh, it's dropped in it. It's not. Yeah. It's not come through as no, we were hoping. And, and a lot of guys have gone out. They're like, ah, oh, it's picked up. We're gonna be on the fins. We see one, two, three, four. F no, three fins out there and uh, five foils. So uh, it's it's gonna be hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm pre pro fin, but uh, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, we've got uh, Dal Pont, Jules, both on the fin. I would say. Yeah, and, and uh, Daldorf. Daldorf. Yeah. All on the top. We got the beast in this. Obviously, we'll be looking out for him. Benedetti has been looking very good. He's on this challenge as hell, closest to us. Giroud, just up wind, and then uh, Cedric Board, just up wind of Giroud on the other Severn. And actually, um, the Neil Pride of Marotti, so he drifted back, but he knows it's a long race. But obviously, needs to manage the race you because need, you need some space at the jibe as well. I would be so afraid at that first jibe because there are eight guys coming few on the foil they can't break few on the fins who can get in the smallest gap and then suddenly stand still in front there of you go. interesting to see actually from that view looking up you can see how much the foils are moving oh look at that fin tastic at the back that will happen again people i'm telling you there will be some fin racing at some point in the future but at the moment, it's all about the foil. That seems to be the fastest craft. That is such a quick jibe. I was expecting like a lot of those jibes. Yeah. And that's what I mean about the low and the high. And you see there's lots of movement. Yeah. We uh, need a couple of them. Exactly. Marotti did an amazing jibe. He came in fifth at that first jibe and now he's first. Yeah, he's absolutely devastating. He's been, he's, he it looks like he got it together today. But then, you know, that mistake in the final, what was the final, really cost him. But did he get sixth in the end? I think he's still uh, in the end sneak past okay. Amado. Yeah, maybe. It's been a pretty... Well, just looking at this, the Beast is... Uh, Struggling. He's under a bit of pressure, I would say, right now, because he's in third place, but Giroud and Benedetti are not, you know... They're not bad riders. Mm. They are definitely in the mix here. Uh, they're taking a little bit of a straighter route. We've got uh, Marotti, Board, So going a little bit higher. Interestingly, uh, at the briefing when they talked about extending the course to six boys, Michelle Becker was definitely against it. He didn't yeah. seem happy at all. So it'd be interesting to see psychologically how he gets on. Uh, and I wonder why, because he seems to be one of the better jibers. Look yeah. at that, big fight for Juru and uh, Benedetti at the moment. Benedetti, really good jibe there. I think it's a course nobody tried yet. So, I mean, a lot of them train in Tenerife, they try different courses, but I, I've never seen this course yet, this co short, so maybe everyone is just getting caught off guard, and that's maybe why some of the guys don't like change yeah. sometimes. Especially if you're starting to feel you're getting a roll, it's definitely something that's not uh, that great. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what you notice just from that, though that really short reach. Oh, I think that's Giroud. I was going to guess. He's had some big crashes. It might not be. Or oh, maybe no, Cedric, Cedric Board. Cedric Board. We didn't see it on your screen, but Cedric Board just went down pretty hard as Marotti goes round. So goes round in second. Then Benedetti. And then it is Giroud. I take it back. I saw Lucas this morning. He's like, man, I've had 10 really bad crashes. Like, really bad. He was like, he said, I'm going to go for my record of 15. <laughs> he said, it's, uh, it's still there. So, one job mark to go. Yep. Early rounds here in this uh, eighth elimination. 
So Marotti. So. And then Benedetti. And then it is Giroud, Lucas Giroud. That's your top four at the moment. Marotti, he's had a rough week, actually. Yeah, he's been... I mean, he know he can do it. He won the last event. He's still sitting in ninth place, just to give it context. You know, it's not like he's totally out of it. A third discard is... Or they won't get a third discard. They need a lot more eliminations for that. But... Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I kind of would like to not see a third discard almost. I think it would be very interesting. Yeah. It would be more interesting without a third discard. Exactly. Here we go. So Marotti will qualify for the semi-finals. Then we're going to have Johan So in second. Benedetti in third. And uh, Lucas Giroud in uh, fourth place. Okay, we're going to get an uh, interview with Blanca Alabao in that last battle she had with uh, Marion Mortifon. Blanca Alabao, what happened on there? You were leading the whole race and then Marion took it at the end. What happened? Yeah, I was very confident actually. Uh, my jazz were really good, but in the boy number 100 something, I had a micro mistake. I just touched a little bit and then she got a better speed. And then she get closer, so in the last mark she get a better jibe, and she nailed it. So yeah, very tricky. Like she did the perfect race, and I was there all the time, focused on the new course. So yeah. What are your thoughts about this new course? New system, new more jibes. Uh, I think with less boys, it's more uh, compact and more in, like fast. So I, I, I like more the other the, the other contest, yeah. You were just saying you had to almost think where are the marks? Yeah, because there are some a little bit upwind, so I thought it was another, and I didn't realize that this change because I didn't saw it before the the guys racing. So yeah, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you. There we go. Interested to hear from Blanca there, and I would agree actually. I like the course, but I think. It needs to be shorter. Like just watching from the live stream now, we can see that little short one. I think it would be really interesting, especially on the foil. It's going to be bad for the fin, I would say, but for the foil racing, I could see how that could be pretty interesting when you have like three of those little slalomy legs in a row and then with the two longer reaches to finish. But anyway, this is, like I said, for me personally, to see this is quite interesting. I think it's... Uh, we can't keep doing the same course, can we? Can we? Maybe we can. Let's have a look at the YouTube comments. What we got? Blanca is beautiful, says Tim. Go and have a word with uh, Matteo Yakino, mate. <laughs> okay, here we go. Getting into this uh, second. Quarter final, Vries fight, Preen, Rakowski, Huber, uh, Sokus, TMA, Vonk, and Everard. Oh, that looked like Sokus was uh, very early on the on the gun there. But uh, let's see. Looked like they're still going. So maybe it was just a. They are still going. Yeah, looks like it. No, surely they've shut down. Yeah, they've shut down. I'm going to say, see you later, Johnny. He's gone. He is gone. Pretty sure on the RRD setup. General recall. So, who was over? We def I'm definitely calling um, RRD over for sure. But was there anybody else? That's the question. Let's 
this is obviously elimination eight heat number three but it's the second quarter final so second quarter final here's a start yeah john's johnny johnny johnny's gone surely i mean he was he was <laughs> He seemed to be have gone by a, a country mile, didn't he? Be very surprised. I was very surprised if it hadn't been a general recall. Okay, so why we are waiting? I think we're going to have an interview with uh, Enrico Marotti. Yep. Enrico Marotti won that quarterfinal. What do we think of this new course? <laughs> uh, it's fun. It's uh, new, so you lost count. You don't know where you are. So you are like, oh, I hope it's this mark. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's fun, it's different, it's longer than we are used to it, so it's cool. Just the conditions are really tricky at the moment. The wind is up, down, up, down, so it's, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't look so, but it's really tricky out there on the starting line because we move a bit up, so it's some uh, holes and some uh, patches of no wind, so it's not easy. And on the moment, it's still really windy, so yeah, uh, hard to choose the right set. But it is what it is. Uh, the course is fun. Awesome. Well, good luck for the next heat. Thanks a lot. You can hear the hesitancy. It's like it's fun. Thank you very honestly, much. it's 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 fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's tricky out there at the moment. Okay. Listen, After just reading one? in between the lines. Um, Looks like we've still uh, got we those guys on our audio, so let's hopefully they don't say anything. Hope they don't swear. <laughs> we've got uh, Aero. What's that? Die Ben. Great event. Great live. Probably the best so far with the foil. Uh, suspense is on till the end. Love it. I'd agree with that. I mean, that is the thing about foiling, especially in these tricky conditions. It's less than two minutes. We have now. had some crazy explosions. Is there time for another interview? The sister of Blanca, who's also her caddy. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, second of the quarterfinals, Reese Fight, Preen, Rakowski, Hooper, Sokos won't be there this time, but TMA will, Vonk will, Everard will, I'm pretty sure, unless there was more than one over. Just, uh, it was Sokos who jumped the gun. Here we go, let's have a look. Nico Preen down this end. Then we've got Evrard from Belgium on the other Neil Pride. We've got Amado Vriesweik on the Severn. And then Hooper in the middle of your picture, really trying to slow up as he comes into this line. As they said, you could hear Enrico saying it's hard to line up up there. And then we've got the Finns coming in as they put the power on. Soon as they just accelerate. Nico Preen, really nice. Look at the top end though. Is that Jordi Vonk on the fin? Trying to motor down and roll over the top of Maciek Rakowski and William Huber. And he does actually go over the top of Maciek. And he's now trying to fight with Huber. We know the wind has gone a bit funky, but there's some big gusts out there. And Jordi Vonk is giving it everything to go round in first place. Let's hope his jibing is on point, but he gets held off by Amado Vriesweik as Vonk jives behind him. So second place for Jordi Vonk. First place, uh, Amado Vriesweik. Then we've got Hooper in about third place. Maciek Rakowski maybe biding his time. He knows it's a long course, but Jordi Vonk looking good at the moment. So very short reach. Geordie's going straight in, very really direct. Great jibe from Geordie. Nice jibe from Hooper. And from uh, Nico Preen at the moment. Matt Check out of it and he's starting to get back in it. We've got Jimmy TMA in this as well. Geordie Vonk doing really good to stay up in second place. 
can he hold it all the way to the end? That would be the trick. Amado Vrieswijk at the moment looking very good. So Amado Vrieswijk in first place. Then we've got second place still, Jordi Vonk. A lot of pressure on that jibe, and you can see it's a little bit lighter as he goes down the course. It's really the wind that's holding him back. He's got the speed, and he's got the jibes at the moment. Hooper in uh, third place, and Nico Preen in fourth. At the moment, Maciek Rakowski is not in the top four. We've got Jimmy TMA making ground as well, downwind. Uh, Jordi Vonk is definitely sailing the faster line into this mark. It's going to be Amado Vriesweik that jives first, but it's going to be blimming close with Jordi Vonk as he tries to slow up as he comes in. And he has made really good ground there, Jordi. So Amado Vriesweik rounding first. Jordi just bobbles on a bit of chop. Good jibe, though, in the end. Just trying to pump his way out as Hubert comes through. Nico Preen comes through. Maciek Rakowski getting back into it. And Jordi Vonk is definitely still in this race, although the foils are sandwiching, sandwiching him <laughs> in the middle there and maybe squeezing him out. Very difficult. This leg on the way in does seem to favour the foils. It's maybe a little bit more upwind. And we know that's when the foils have that big advantage. Oh, it does seem that the foils might have just got that extra move, but you never know. One mistake from any of these four riders and uh, Jordi Vonk, and they've had to go the other side of that swell. Oh, and Hooper's gone down. Hooper has gone down, opening the door for Jordi Vonk. He's still there. Jimmy TMA having a moment as well. So it is still all going on for Jordi Vonk. That extra jibe. Two extra jibes. What caused the damage there? If that had been the finish, Jordi Vonk wouldn't have made it. So maybe it has helped. Let's see. Amado Vriesweik in this second quarter final. He's got a, a fairly healthy lead coming into the last jibe mark. Bit of swell coming through as Amado goes round clean. Then we've got Nico Preen. We've got, ooh, Maciek Rakowski and Jimmy TMA and Jordi Vonk just behind. Jimmy TMA's not given up. Jimmy TMA is giving Vonk a good run for his money here. Let's focus on that battle of the two Finns because these boys are going to have a drag race here for fourth place. This is like old school Finn racing. Come on, boys and girls. Let's cheer them on, Jimmy. TMA on the right, Jordi Vonk on the left, and Vonk is not having any of his sails just down and sits on him for a second and at the time Jimmy just got absolutely pushing with everything you could see the board just took off um, and Geordie's going to have to go upwind a bit here how much is he going to have to go upwind is it going to change him coming into the finish like we saw with Jenna Gibson I don't think so so it will be the top three foils, Amado Vriesweik, and it is uh, Jordi Vonk that gets that fourth place ahead of Jimmy Tieme. Obviously, Nico Preen going through and Maciek Rakowski.
Das ist immer so tricky zu, zu sagen. Ich, ich habe mich immer komplett verschätzt. Deshalb würde ich sagen, dass also ich wäre maximal jetzt wahrscheinlich auf einem 5 0 er Ja, aber besser als zu wenig. Ja, aber ich meine, so viel, so viel ist ja nicht. Das ist schon witzig. Ich habe mir auch vorgestellt, wie es ankommen würde, wenn ich, oder ich würde auch gerne wissen, wie es im Vergleich wäre, wenn ich einfach mich so mit Gier, mit so Segelnummer und sowas ein bisschen tarnmäßig, da wenn so ein Frauenlied mit rein Mogel halt ein Helm, dass man mich nicht so sieht. Ja, ich würde voll gerne wissen, wie es aussehen würde, wenn ich da wie Konkurrenz, ich wäre nicht konkurrenzfähig über meine Alten zu beschissen, glaube ich, aber ich würde es trotzdem gerne wissen, wie es wäre. Ich glaube, danach würde ein Aller hassen. Ich glaube, du würdest so einen Shitstorm kriegen. <lacht> I'm here with Marina Alabao, Olympic gold medalist and PWA Vice World Champion. But your role is completely different this week. You're caddying for your little sister Blanca. How is that role? Yeah, it's, it's super nice. I'm super happy here to help her. Um, she's doing a really good job. Um, yeah, I'm super happy because uh, I was outside for a few years and happy to see everyone again. What's the most important thing to be as a caddy? Uh, oof, that's a good question. I don't know, you need to have a good experience. I know Blanca very well, so I know it, uh, how can I help her. It's not just choosing the equipment, but how the, the mindset. So yeah, she, she has improved a lot. I'm really happy and proud, but it's still, it's still a big wave to, to improve. And what's the most important piece of equipment you've bought this week? I, well, the umbrella, definitely, <laughs> the umbrella. First day I was without umbrella and we was like, like burning. And since we have the umbrella, we, we are not even going up to the car. We just stay here on the beach. <laughs> and finally, how is the relationship with your sister in these such heated moments? Uh, yeah, it was, was really, really nice. We just have one, one fight. That, that it's, it's okay, no, it's good. Just yeah, one. We have it with our bracelet. Maybe we ask Blanca this question. <laughs> <laughs> it was but, fine, it was fine. But yeah, overall, really good. Really good. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck to Caddy, good luck to Blanca, and you're up soon. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Um, we lost a bit of power in the commentary booth, but we seem to be back on now. So uh, let me know if you can hear me. You should be uh, loud and clear. What happened? Let me know what happened. We're on the last quarterfinals. Becker, Mortefont, Goya, Van der Berg, Winter, Rocha, Franz and Kurnum. You know you miss me. Sometimes you've got to go away to be missed. That's just how it works. Absence makes the heart grow fonder and all that. We didn't miss too much, did we? Right, so there we go. Like I said, I'm going to have to look at the results. I missed everything then. I was running around. Well, that's, actually, that's a lie. I wasn't running around. There's a lot of people running around. I was trying to stay relaxed. So we had uh, Bruno Martini win the last one. Nice, two Italians up there. Uh, Matteo Iacchino, a cousin in third. And it looks like Mr. Stallman in fourth place. Good to see. Good to see. I wish I'd had a beer. I'm just reading these comments in the bar. I wish I had. That would be uh, very nice. If anyone fancies bringing me a beer, I'm very welcome. It's at least three o'clock local time. Come on, let's get on with this quarterfinal. Michelle Becker. Now, he wasn't happy about doing a longer race. 
Is it in his head? Will he just shake it off and turn on the speed? He's got some of the best jibes, so uh, why not expect uh, Goya to be up there? Expect more to fun. Cantati Franz put in a challenge. That wind hasn't really kicked in yet. Yeah, I was just renegotiating contracts, so I went off air until they okayed to my crazy fees. Uh, here we go, Becker down this pin end. We got Mortifon above him on that duotone. Then we got Nico Goya. Uh, we've also got Vinter in there. And there we go. It's a good start by the looks of it. Becker and Mortifon having a, a right battle down this end. Like I said, Becker, he is not afraid to uh, take it to the big boys he doesn't get worried that's for sure uh, in the middle Nico Goya we know how fast he can be uh, we've also got the Neil Pride of uh, the Neil Pride of Cordham Cordham's in there as well Ty Franz on the fin can he make a dent we know he has to be up there we're going to put uh, a co-commentator in as well. We got Cedric Board. He's been out there. He can give us the lowdown round the uh, first mark in first place. Nico Goya. Oh, Becker! Little moment there. Nose dived it. Manages to save it. Kurnham comes through. This leg is very short. We've got Mortifon in this. Uh, uh, Tate Franz is in it. We've also got Mr. Board. How is this short little reach here? Quite short. No, it's fun actually. It I was fun. Do we want more of those short ones? Mm, like this, it was perfect actually. Okay. Good to hear. Oh, Tay Franz on the inside with the fin. Really nice job. He's actually moved up, which we haven't seen many of the, yeah. the fin sailors do. And also there is way less job than yesterday. So for fins, it can be the moment. Well, there he is. He's challenging Becker and Mortifon right now, Tati Franz. So it is all to play for as yeah, we come. Now it's into a bit up wind, so it's tricky for Tati, I guess. But if you can make this jibe. Oof, Drone needs to get out of the way as Tati Franz comes through. It's a good jibe from Tati, a good jibe from Mortifon and Oof, from Becker Mal though. <laughs> Malto in spin out. It is all going on. Tati Franz, this is very upwind, this leg, is it? No, 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 the, the other one. Oh, the other one, okay. I mean, depends because it's so gussy, so it can change from race to race. Well, at the moment, Nico Goya leading. Then we've got uh, Kurnum in second place. And then Tati Franz. Then we've got Pierre Mortifon and Michelle Becker. We've still got three jibe marks to go. So it is all to play for. And the wind looks like it's cranking a little bit now. Ah, Tati is on the... Not on the right place to... Oh, my Whoa, God. he's going to go round in the foil. He's going to have to no, surely... No, Tachi. No. Ooh, no. It's okay. It's yeah, all yeah. over the place, but he makes it round. Yeah, but Pierre going to pass him now. This is close, isn't it? Close racing. Tati Franz going to have to hold off Michelle Becker down the bottom end. Kurnum and Tati getting very close in that last jibe mark. But Tati Franz is trying to push with everything he's got. It's two jibe marks to go. Three reaches to go. Nico Goya is already got a very comfortable lead. But the battle for fourth is still on. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> it is so close for poor, fourth poor place. <laughs> you got to feel like you're up against it now, haven't you? It is very difficult. I like difficult. everybody on the race, but I'm for Tati 100%. Yeah, 100%. Nico Goya already round, oh, and Goya. Tati has got some difficulty now. Goya has a moment. Mortifon yeah. round. Kurnum round. Tati Franz on the inside. Oh! oh. No oh. way. Oh, yeah. that's like we didn't see that close no, shot, yeah. but it's okay? Ta yeah, yeah, Tati stopped playing, and uh, Baker crashed on him, but uh, at slow motion. So Ooh. it was not, th it was a just a racing incident. Okay, but it, it, as long as no one got run over there. I mean, that's good news for winter because I think uh, the Danish guy <laughs> is in fourth place now. But bad news, obviously, for Michelle Becker, who just moved up into fourth place in the overalls. And as I said to you, he wasn't happy about extending the course. And that is an extra jibe. Yeah. One of the extra jibes. Don't speak to, to me about this. I fall because of that. <laughs> this is, there we go. It <laughs> no, does. I, I speak because of myself. I, I fall because of myself only. Well, the top four is uh, clean at the front. But Michelle Becker, Tati Franz had a coming together there. Wow. You kind of thought Becker, man, I just maybe, like you say, misjudged or thought Tati was going to get away. I think it was a bit light and Tati stopped playing because of light wind and yeah. Well, 
It's going to be Nico Goya. No surprises there that takes the win in this quarterfinals. Um, second place, it looks like it will be Mortifont, followed by uh, Sebastian Kernum, and then Winter, I think it is. Winter? Yeah, the Danish. Yeah, from, Dan from Denmark. So makes it into the semi finals. It's a good result for the young Danish rider. Here we go. There's just a little replays from that race. There we go. Tatty France from the outside there Ooh, to Baker. inside. Baker had a moment on that first jibe that he managed to come back from. And Tatty at that point, he did a really good jibe here, which you wouldn't have thought actually looking at the angle he was coming in at. But he came out in third place. So it was impressive racing, and here was where it... Oh, it was a touch too aggressive, but yeah. somehow he managed to, to get it good for himself. Well, somehow Cornham didn't hit him. I mean, he did really well to hold that, and here's Baker. <gasps> yeah, but I mean, for me, in this case, Baker was not too aggressive. It was just on his way, but... We could have another look while we've got a bit of time. Can we have another look at that tie jibe then? I mean, it obviously wasn't intentional. Uh, yeah. and he was coming from behind, so yeah. you're definitely not going to do it intentionally. You have to be aware that something like this can happen, but sometimes people just arrive and they have no idea of what, how it can happen. And this one was not like this. It was just... Yeah, that looked... Uh, well, Becker's not going to be happy, that is for sure. Uh, we got the second, well, the first semi-final coming up, though. Uh, Enrico Marotti, Johan So, Benedetti, uh, Giroud, Vrieswijk, uh, Preen, Rakowski, and Vonk. Vonk was on the fin last time. I don't see. I was so pissed off with my razor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you went down on the last drive, Mark. No, second. This was last. the race of this morning. And this one, I was... Okay. I mean, not. Cr I was pushing, and Enrico was in, in first. I was in second, and I said, okay, easy now. Two seconds after I was ahead on the water. Easy now, that is what I've heard from a few guys. <laughs> Going easy is not easy. No, actually, because in fall you have to push, not 100%, but you have to push to keep the board flat and stable. And if you let it go and you take a bad gust, then you fly away. Yeah, well, let's but hope. I don't, I one point, you Ooh, don't want to. Ooh, Marotti down that bottom end. Yeah. Another little moment there from Enrico Marotti. Uh, Nico Preen just upwind of him on the other Neil Pride cell. Then we've got Amado Vrieswijk, uh, Giroud. Then we've got the beast, Maciek Rakowski. Stacked one, this is Benedetti. And then Jordi Vonk up the top end on the fin. Can he do some damage? This looks like a tough, tough field. But uh, Good start from Jordi, but yeah, it's a bit upwind this one. He's got the speed, hasn't he, Geordie? If anyone's got it on the fin, but these boys are not slow on the foil and they are flying already with everyone on the start line. And Geordie's up against it, as you can already see as we go down into the first mark. It looks to me like Nico Preen is just dropped back. No, it's Nico Preen in the lead, is it? Can't see from this angle, but... Wow, oh, the pride on the inside. Look at that. Fuck, this is a so it is uh, Marotti round in first place. Then we've got Amado Vrieswijk. Maciek is fighting for fourth place. Fourth between the two FMX riders, Maciek Rakowski and the Beast. It's only a short little leg, this. You have to be right on the money. And the Beast is already making good ground on the top riders. Oh, that is synchronised jibing from Enrico. <laughs> I mean, so from the Beast there. And Amado Vries, like, what? That's what we want about the short course. That's what it does. It keeps it so close. I don't even put the harness line me on the secondary reach. Man, that was impressive stuff from Johan so there managed to keep his cool and he's actually now into the lead so Johan so rounding first now Enrico Marotti has dropped to third Amado Vrieswijk up into second great jibe from Amado oh my god it's so close and then Maciek Rakowski is now in fourth place with um, Pri and Bilo yeah he's got Pri right behind him he's got Benedetti right behind him this is going to be a very close finish we've got six jibe marks and it's still oh so close with the semi final stages and it is definitely a longer race now you have to keep that concentration even longer on the foil which as we have been told by every rider the concentration is the hardest thing it is absolutely mental game out there 
Uh, but armed in first, Johan So sitting in second place in this competition. Second place, Amado Vrieswijk. Then we've got Enrico Marotti. Then Maciek Rakowski. Then we've got Nico Preen and Benedict. Detti. Well, my check is going down, but I'm not sure if it's a good choice. Well, we're about to find out, Cedric. We're about to find out. Looks like the Beast has got a good lead. Amado Vriesweig looking good. But uh, maybe Matchek went down because he was getting rolled a little bit. Because mm. it looks like the Prides have got a bit of ground on him. But he's going a much more direct route. But Nico Preen having a go at Matchek Rakowski here. Definitely Nico Preen having a go. He's trying to sell right down on top of him. You don't usually see this in foil racing, but you're seeing it right now. Nico Preen is trying to roll him. Whoa. Oh, and he's, <laughs> oh, he's right on the edge. Oh, he oh, is oh. right on the edge. The beast goes round. Amado goes round. Marotti goes round. Matchek does still go round in fourth place, but Preen had a lovely inside line there. Matchek has got the inside line now going into the next mark, but Preen is going to try and change that Thank as you. he tries to squash him, and Preen is now taking Whoa. fourth place. Maciek Rakowski is back, three. but Preen is going. Preen is absolutely going. He's gone underneath Marotti. Nico Preen is not oh. backing down. Nico Preen might go up into second place here. I hope Enrico will not crash. Wow, no, Enrico has dropped <laughs> back. Okay. Uh, Preen's dropped back. Nico's come through. The beast goes through him first. And then there's a battle <laughs> between uh, Marotti. Marotti. No! We know, oh, no. Oh. We know Marotti. I was about to say, we've seen it so many times times no. his head is a shed right now Psycholo psychologically uh, damaged i mean it was not an easy jibe with um, amazon's outside but uh, yeah wow wow can we relax now please <laughs> oh there we go I all the way to the end i think enrico fall even more than me oh enrico he is a broken man he is a broken man. I give him a big hug before, but you could see he's had a rough. He's having a rough week. He's still inside the top ten, but he's having a rough week. This has been uh, a very, very hard week from Rico right yeah, after his win in Pozo. But the Beast wins it. Johan So, then with Mardo Vriesweig, then Nico Preen. Great race from Nico Preen there. Uh, and Maciek Rakowski as well. Kept cool and calm under pressure. But it was looking a bit dicey if Marotti had made that jibe. Yeah, but I, th I think he was too close to Amado a bit. I mean, not too close, but... Yeah, well, uh, we'll have another look at it now on the highlights. A great race, though. I love this little it's short good. leg. It's actually, it's super fun outside. Yeah, that looked great. Even if I'm last... I oh, look at that. Out. Nico Breen and Amado. I mean, the Beast and Amado. Oh, that was so close. Those boys were literally touching. And then this was the point. Matchek was in fourth and Preen yeah. started making a move. He went a bit wide actually here. It wasn't this one. Oh, and that was Preen trying to overtake, uh, trying to roll Matchek. Rakowski hit the sort of water, stopped him a bit. Matchek got a better advantage as we come into this jive mark. It's, it's pretty sick racing this. Oh, it's fun. You can see him weaving all over the place. You've got so much movement on the foil. And then here it is, Enrico Marotti. Oh, it's, you can tell. Match. Yeah. I mean, Amado must have been looking no, at that yeah, foil no, going, yeah, and what? Amado, I, I might do give him more than enough room. He was. Yeah. It was not the mistake of Amado at all. If Marotti made that jibe, Machek was in trouble. Yeah. Machek was in trouble, but he's yeah, in the final Maciek, now. Machek is a good sailor because... You see a good sailor when he's in trouble, like Antoine back in the day, if he's uh, able to come back or not, and uh, yeah. often he's able to come back much. Well, you see Maciek today. He had a bad day yesterday yeah. and then came out nearly won yeah. that first elimination today. And that's what you've got to do if you want to be, Constant, if you yeah, want to be in back. the a podium fight. All right. Whew. What have we got? I'm just looking at the results. We haven't heard anything from Tati France, so I'm guessing he's okay. Uh, second semi-final, Bruno Martini, uh, Matteo Iacchino, uh, Stallman, Cousin, Goya, Mortifon, Kurnum and Vinter. Wow. Who's your money on here? Cedric Ward, who do you think? I put half of my money on Martini if you don't fall. And then a bit of uh, on Matteo because he's a safe sailor and on Mortefon. 
And Goya. Oh, Goya we don't yeah. even have to yeah. mention him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, he don't even need to Goya. mention him. He's already won, as you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, ju- I have to say, he wanted me to tell people at home. He is on the same gear he would have registered at the beginning of the year, let's no, say. He's, he's on his bigger wing. Maybe not now. No, no, he's not. He's Before, not. he said he was on a 465. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe this, this morning. morning. Yeah, but this morning was uh, 15 knots. Yeah. Now he's not 15. Okay, now anymore. he's on the small wing. <laughs> I don't Actually, I don't know, but uh, I'm 80% sure that he's on the small wing. Yeah, he said to tell everyone, in the first re- elimination today, he was on his normal gear. He wasn't on the super small stuff. Yeah, yeah. but He did rig a 3.7. Oh yeah? He's not on it yet, obviously. Yeah, but, but normally, he even if it's nuclear, the 4.5 is more stable. Because in foil, if you go too small, it's like a bit in waves at one point. If okay. you go 3.3, so it's not that stable. All right, yellow flag. But today is good because is it's quite, quite flat. Yesterday, on the afternoon, it was so choppy. Mm. I like it choppy. And yeah. swelly. Uh, and swelly, gusty. but not, not choppy. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the variables <laughs> thrown into one. 15 knots to 30 knot gusts, that's what no, I'm no, into. No. That's, the, that's the best. Um, yeah, and changing direction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 45 seconds on the clock. Oh, my God. So, second semi-final. Obviously, top four make it through to the final. Here we Look, go. It's light sometimes, eh? it's not that windy. Yeah, definitely up that not top light, end. But, uh, yeah, there's a few holes. I definitely would 18 say 18 to 28 or something like this. So, Matteo Iacchino, closest to us. Then we've got Bruno Martini on the blue and green Neil Pride. Then it looks like we've got uh, Alex Kuzan. Then we've got Nico Goya in the middle of the pack. Then Kuzan, Kuzan is, uh, is pushing for he's it. He's going, isn't he? He doesn't yeah, want to. slow down now. Ah. Let's see. Let's see. Boom. Well, we'll look, have to wait and Goya. see. Goyard is on the back, but in 10 seconds it will be another Goya, story. we know he's got the speed, and he might have the smaller wing on now. If he has, we know he's got an extra knot or two um, in top speed, which seems unfair, but it, you still have to jibe, and jibing becomes harder on those smaller wings. Oof. Oh, hello. Matteo. Matteo Yakino getting a little wobble on there. Oh, Bruno Matteo. Martini's in this, is ra- in this race as well, so we Matteo know what that can mean. Here we Except go, Matteo go. coming back in and squeezes up. It's going to be Goy around in first, then Yakino, then Cousin, then Bruno Martini, then Stallman, then uh, Mortifon. Yeah, it will be a fight between uh, Mortifon and Cousin, I guess. It's going to come down to it. You can already see it. This short little leg here with uh, Nico Goya leading. Bruno Martini moves into second place. So Nico Goya round in first. Then uh, Bruno Martini. Cousin, 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 cousin. Oh, Cousin has got it all wrong. He got a little bit stuck there. Did he get hooked in? Oh, oh it's an OK sandwich. The, the old Brit. Uh, Brit French sandwich. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my life. Fish, fish and chips. <laughs> Oh. It's a battle now with um, also the Nail Pride on the back. Yeah, let's we'll see if we can get seven. that drone up in the sky. There we go. Nico Goya. Then we've got Bruno Martini. Matteo Iacchino in third. Then we've got Stallman. Then we've got Mortifon. Then we've got uh, Kurnum, I think it is. Yes. Yeah, it's all to play for. Four go through. Nico Goya looking very solid at the front. Look, look. Second place, Yakino. Cousin is going down. He's, he was way behind, but maybe yeah. with a direct route. He's taking a very direct route, and he is closing the gap. Bruno Martini is putting in some speed here. Stallman has to be careful. The Brit is looking good for fourth place at the moment. Nico Goya leading, but Cousin, we just saw him under the Nephus right. Oh, oh and he's gone. Fucking he's yeah. gone. We saw him for a second and then he's gone. Nico Goya he's on still the leading. Goya, Great no? jibe from the, the second and third place riders on that swell. Yakino and Martini and Stallman looking very good. Could he make his first final? He might well do here. Top four finish, but Mortifon is in fifth. Not what you want, Pierre Mortifon behind you in a battle for fourth place. At the moment, two jibe marks to go. It's still a long Scruti, way. Scruti is going really well, eh? Yeah. Because uh, he's still with Bruno. He's definitely found his uh, found his groove, Scotty Stallman. He's a young fella. What size front wing he has, you know? I actually don't know. I'll be honest. I think it's not 
as big as the one from Jordi and the other one. Well, he's looking like he's got good speed. So Nico Goya rounded first. Any mistakes will be punished. Yakino first, then Brewer. Oh, Stallman, Stallman, yeah, stay on. Yeah, we'll go down. Stillman. Yeah, we'll go down. Yeah, he's going to have to. Stallman with a mistake there wow. and already Mortifon. What a jibe. Yeah, I mean, there was a small mistake yeah, from Stallman mistake, and yeah. Mortifon has pounced. It, it's not done, but... No, nah, but Mortifon, we know how consistent Pierre is. He saw that mistake. He nailed the jibe and he is already up into fourth place. Just check this uh, last uh, jibe mark coming two, up. The two Italians, they were doing all the race one, one meter from each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's not no, over. What am I saying? Wow. Stallman's still oh, in this. Oh, 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 oh. And he's going to have a better line. Ah. Oh, Pierre. Oh my life, here we go. We're going to have a battle now. Stay yeah, on that fourth and fifth, please. Stay on that fourth and fifth. Uh, that yeah, where yeah. the battle is. Nico's going to win this. It's, Bruno it's Martini in second, Britain. then Yakino. For sure. Wow, we can't see from that angle. But Stallman and Mortafon have got a real drag race all the way to the finish. Yeah, no, it's, I think for Pierre, he can push, but it's a bit up win and he's on the... To see that fourth, fifth place, just turn, the win turn, turn a little first. bit. Someone tap him on the shoulder, Mr. Oh. Drone Man. No, it's over. Stormman's got oh. this, hasn't he? he I is. think Stormman's got this. Nico Goy is going to win it. Yakino second. Bruno Martini third. Who will get fourth? Will Stormman make his first final? Great. He might well do. He's looking good at the moment. It's going to be Stormman that maybe makes his first ever yeah, PWA great. final. And he explodes over the line. Yeah, good job, good job. Wow. Good race from Scotty there. Whew. I mean, that would have been a long race Look, well, yeah, well, when you're tough. fighting off Mortifon. Yeah, Goya, I mean, to start where he started and end up that far ahead at the first, <laughs> jibing on his own. There were some moments in there. Kurnam actually rounded pretty nicely. This jibe with Kuzan, oh. oh. Yeah. Maybe he got hooked in or something, got stuck. I mean, in four you can't, you cannot turn so tight at the end. In in fins you can crank more. Look where Scotty came from. He came from back oh, on the on the on the jib before. I was well, always there, I think. Yeah, but I mean, he moved into that top bit then. Here we go. This was an uh, interesting jib. Oh, that's cousin, for cousin. sure. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I, I could I could have done the same. <laughs> Easy. Here we go. Kurnam came through. Scotty, this was when he had that moment, and Pierre actually, it doesn't look like it there, but yeah, but Pierre has a big front wing, so he's a little bit slower. This is where he, he so couldn't crank speed. it in. Scotty had a bit of ground inside. I think he, at one point, he wanted to to pass inside Martini, but then he realized that he cannot do it on a proper way. Yeah. Then he fuck his job. Great race. <sighs> Yeah, there was a couple of the Brits complaining about six jibes, but now Scotty's in the final. Way <laughs> <laughs> they love the nah. six boys slalom. <laughs> Brit, Brit are always fair play. That's what they <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got another women's uh, full fleet coming on. Offringa obviously leading at the moment, but that lead has been cut. It is just near well four points, three point six in it. It's very close. It's Marion did Mortifon. Did they get already the third discard or not yet? Uh, it's yes, at, it's it should at 11 be in. Or at 13? It should be at 12. The women. No, it they get only two. I think there's three in now. Yeah, three. Ah, okay. Three in now, and there's only three and a bit points in it. Three, three point six points in so, it. Yeah. A good race for Marion, and if. Uh, yeah, but if she can't overtake Sarah in this race, I don't Blanca, think. Blanca, if she wants to pass Marion, she has to do really good because Marion. It's got in two worst fourths. In worst case scenario, she gets four and fourths yeah. again. She can't overtake her in this round. No. And I think Sarah Keita gets worse of fourth. She'd have 17.2. Yeah. She can't be overtaken in this round. So whatever happens, Sarah Keita will be leading at the end of this elimination. But Marion could really close the yeah. gap. If she was to win this, mm. there would be less than and, a point and in it. Now, now it's. I'm, I'm, I think you, we can, even if it's light, we can go quite fast on fins because it's not so choppy. Yeah. But with six jibe, you need to be on it. You on need fins. to be on it. I was just saying that. So you need to be on it. You, you see, so even much Georgie concentration. Or, or Tachi or Jimmy, they struggle more now than before. Even yeah. if it's faster for fins now because fins is so much physical compared to foil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's the thing. Sarah's been on the fin every race, so she's probably knackered. She, she, and now she's got six boys. If it was, if it was me, she can take the trophy now. Yeah. <laughs> and go on. <home. laughs> well, here we go. She's still going. She is still going. Where is Sarah? Oh, Sarah is going. No, it's not Sarah. Here we go. Sarah Keita, I think. They miss speed, huh? A bit on the Here start. we go. Jenna Gibson having a push through. We've got Mary Mortifon down this bottom end. We've got Blanca Alabao down this bottom end. Jenna Gibson in the middle. Yeah. Sarah get a better start than, um, than uh, Sarah Keita. Yeah. Sarah Keita pushing yeah. through, though, yeah, just yeah. underneath. Like you say, a little bit flatter Luke out Blanca, there. She's pushing down on Marion. She's got some speed, haven't they? The foils now, we saw it on the first days where actually Sarah Keita looked like she was a lot quicker, but now it's looking very even. But Sarah Keita has just rolled, well, trying to roll Justine Lemetier, but it's not going to be enough. She's going to go Ooh. into this first box. She goes inside. Oh, here we go. Sarah Keita goes inside. Lovely a, jive. If she has a swell, it's good. Go, go, go. She needs to keep it it's going. Okay. She does. Great jive from Sarah yeah, Keita. Great Mayan jive from Blanca Alabao but Marion Mortifon comes from underneath on the foil same as Justine Lamentier and she's pushing Sarah Keita up Sarah Keita can't go any higher how can she go any higher she's on the fin she's getting a little bit stuck she's had to go below and it's a very short leg and straight away oh, Sarah Keita right, jives yeah. inside that's the good thing about the fin you can yeah, do a shorter line exit. look Marion she's going to pass out this is good racing this is great racing now Blanca Alabao keeps it together and Sarah Keita has done an amazing job there to be yeah, up in yeah, second I place. I was surprised. I wish she'd come back. Eh? What a little run she's had there. Sarah Keita off Ringer and she's pushing Blanca Alabao again here. So Sarah Keita off Ringer is powering your way to the front. What a race so far from Sarah Keita off Ringer. Some really brave racing decisions. But Ready? she's got to keep it together. Blanca Alabao, a little bit wayward on that jibe. But Marion Mortifon's going to come through. Marion Mortifon has gained on Blanca Alabao and Sarah it's Keita intense. has pulled out. Yeah, wow. And, and this, this, this leg is a little bit longer than the other one. This could give the advantage on the way out to Sarah Keita. We know she's quick on the way out. If she says she prefers this leg, she can and get the board flying. Blanca Alabao coming back and said to Marion Mortifon. Just in his ears, if she's... No, I was just going to say, Justine Lemons, yeah, just sitting in wait. Just yeah. sitting there, waiting. <laughs> waiting for a Where's mistake. Sarah, what she's doing? She's going down. She's going down, Sarah Keita. We know. Well, she's going straight at the ball. Ah, Look at the go, distance. That one go to, to up win, maybe. Yeah, Sarah Keita is going way more direct. Blanca Alabao up high. Yeah, Sarah jive. Keita needs oh. a good jibe here. She must be absolutely knackered. A great jibe from Blanca. Good jibe from Marion Mortifon. This is going to come right down <laughs> to the wire. <laughs> they fight, huh? Oh, Justine. Lemetier still sitting in fourth place. They've not gained on her. Marion is pushing. Marion Mortifon's got some speed today. I can tell you this. If she's to win this, she will close the gap a little bit more. But Sarah Keita That's has Sarah not Keita. given up. She's dead. She is absolutely knackered right now. She's got two more jive marks to go. This is physically exhausting on yeah. the fin absolutely exhausting Marion Mortifon has found the speed we know Sarah Keita goes much better on the way out so expect her to gain on this next leg the jive, the jive between Sarah Keita and uh, it's all on this jive yeah. well we're going to see what's going to happen Marion Mortifon's coming in and she can relax a little bit on the foil but you can't relax oh, too no much way, no way. you can't relax too much no. and there we go Blanca Alapau goes through the inside so does Justine Lemetier. Sarah Keita off Ringer is pumping to get going as Jenny Gibson nice, comes nice. through Oh my God, like I said, you can relax, but you can't relax. It's one of those things. Wow. Poor Marion. Wow, Marion Mortifon drops it in. Blanca Alabao now takes the lead. Justine Lemetier, do not <laughs> count that French woman out. We know how competitive she is. We know how much she wants to win here on day number four of this Fuerteventura PWA World Cup. We've got one jive mark to go. One jive mark to win it. Blanca needs to keep herself composed. Can she move into the podium places? It's a very solid jibe, but it's a very good jibe on the inside from Justine Lamartier. Yeah, this is not over. This is definitely not over. Justine is going to give it everything down this last reach. We know Blanca yeah. Alabao is as well. A full drag race here. Blanca Alabao versus Justine Lamartier. They're both equally quick, but Justine looks like she's got a little bit more. One touchdown would seal it. One touchdown. 
down. Yes. One lapse in concentration She's could coming. be the difference. And when you can feel someone right on your back, there's Ooh. way more pressure. Blanca Alabao is keeping it together, but Justine Levitier is coming. She is definitely coming. Blanca's having to go a little bit upwind, and Ooh. Justine's gone lower. Justine has chose ah, to go lower. I think it's over, surely. Ah, it Blanca Alabao is holding on here. Blanca Alabao does it. Great win for Good Blanca. Job. Good race from Justine Lamontier. And third yeah. place will be Sarah, Sarah Keita off Ringa. She extends the lead at the top. Fourth place, Jenna Gibson. And Marion Mortifon. She's coming. She's coming quite yeah. a lot later. She's not actually going to be fifth either. No. Who's that? That is uh, uh, Van Der Veen. Wow. Great race. Yeah, it was intense. <laughs> Sarah should be exhausted. This was great. From, from yeah. Sarah Keita here, we love this opening exchange. I, th I think if the wind could be like two, three knots stronger, it yeah. can help a lot of things. Agreed. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Not too, I think I've said that every race. Just a little bit more. <laughs> Oof. Right, after we look at these highlights, we get our breath back. Oh, that was when Marion went down. Oh, what happened? Let's have a look. Where is the... Oh, just lost the... And Sarah Keita, if she could have got inside there. Yeah, she just couldn't get inside. Inside, mm. she no, could she, have had a chance. The, the problem of Justin, she has a medium front wing, not a small front wing. Okay. So, yeah, she could be much faster with another wings, but it is how it is. Oof, okay. I'm just trying to get my breath back. We've got runners-up final coming. We've got winners final coming. Um, and we will have some movements at the top of the men's leaderboard. In the women's, for example, Sarah Keita will put a third. So she'll have 16.2 points. Uh, Marion Mortifon will count a fourth place. Yeah. So she'll have 20.8. It will be two points different between Marion and uh, Blanca. Yeah, and, and then less. Blanca moves up. Yeah, it's going to be close. That podium is going to be very close. Justine Lemetier puts a second in. and uh, She's still there. She's still there. She is definitely still there. Those podiums are going to come down to the last day. I'm sure of it. Right. Runners up final. Benedetti, Marotti, Vonk, Giroux. Mortifont, Kurnum, Vinter, and uh, Cousin. I mean, you would look at that and think Marotti, but Ma Marotti he's been making mistakes. Benedetti, because he's selling really good and consistent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Mortifont is selling super good, but he has also not a small, small front wing. So now the reach are long, so yeah, it's maybe a disadvantage for him. Yeah. And Vonk uh, will have to, <laughs> to push a lot. Yeah, he's on the fin. Not an easy... I give up with the fins. Yeah, it's Three it's days ago. I mean, I'm fin slower, but at one point... Yeah. What, what's, mean, your, what's your take on uh, fin-only competitions? You into that? I mean... As well as, obviously. You know, now I'm one of the oldest guys on tour and uh, I always try to make logical choice, not what I like or don't like, what is yeah. good for windsurfing in the future, for the brand, for the, for the industry, for the rider, for the organizer. And uh, if you look at this, foil is nice. It's great. We have to do foils. But Fins is a bigger market. Yeah. So we have to find a way to combine all this together in order to have still some salary and some gear selling at the end of the year. Or you said we don't care about money, we don't care about anything, we just go for fun because we love fun and that's it. But the problem is some riders, they want to do foil and they think they will have a big future and yeah. I think it's a bit tricky because even if a lot of young guys are coming to the sport, it's not the guys who are buying gear. Yeah. So the guys who are buying gear are more old, let's say, Yeah. and they are fin slower, so even if a percentage go to foil, so it's, it's not an easy choice. For me, we should have combined fins and foil with maybe fins uh, only event. Yeah. 
but uh, it could still happen I mean, next year though. I'm last I mean, on this event last I fall every time but I get so much fun <laughs> and uh, I want to practice more because not, not an excuse I don't practice enough so it's fun what we do yeah. just it's completely disconnected to the market and reality so yeah we have to take care of that yeah oh, it makes sense valid points I think Valid points. What about wave slalom? Have you ever done wave slalom out of interest? Has, has it ever been Never in my life. Oh, yeah. Every time you speak to me about this, and I think you should organize an event like this. I'm going to. <laughs> I, I literally, I'm going to. I'm going to do at least a media event for it. Just go, go for it. And then commentate it. I've already got some plans. I, yes, I just need to find... It. The venue is the hardest place. Yeah, because And getting people wind, together, you, you, you know. Need, yeah, for sure. So it needs to tag on to no, another know, event to make it yeah. doable. But it's, it's definitely, I think it needs to happen. It needs to have a video, and yeah. then that video needs to <laughs> yeah. do its selling. Because I, I definitely think the market would love it. The windsurfing market. Yeah, for sure. Wind I, I, it Wind just action. will not be a bad thing. Just, just the problems that we have now, I mean, fall is nice, but we are pushing with such small front wing that now we cannot compete under 10 knots anymore. This is not true. And if you want to have new events, like, I don't know, uh, Dubai, whatever, yeah. Miami or Lake, we need to compete between proper 7 to 10 knots. Yeah. Even if I don't like that. Yeah. And for this, we need bigger front wings. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's good what we do with the foil, but at the end, we're going to make the same mistake that we did with the fins some years ago. It goes too elite. Too, too, too we need too much wind. Too, too small windy. And yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, a lot of guys from the new generation, they're going to quit the tour. So you can tell me a lot uh, of new guys will arrive, but I don't see them yet. So maybe they will arrive, and I hope yeah. so. But I think there's a bigger changeover period than people are saying, though. You know, you you will see those maybe IQ foil guys, but it's it's years. Yeah, and years. I'm, I'm, I will be super happy if they come. But at the end, to come on tour, if you come for one or two events, it's one thing. If you come for five, six events, the time to get the support from the sponsor, to perform, to train. So it's gonna be three, four, five years. And uh, yeah, during this time. I mean, I'll be honest, I, I see it being two separate fin events and foil events and then an overall champion. I, I can see that. For, for me, yeah. I mean, But combined it's, it's in the same easy. event, like this is a five but day event. Yeah. I could see fin and foil being in. Mix. Sometimes mix. the race director choose on the morning yeah. what we do. It's like freestyle. Freestyle is super nice. But in Pozo, it's a wave event. Yeah. As I, we speak about this already. So it's good to make some freestyle move, but you need to to be able to make a proper turn on the rails. Yeah. And for me, the world champion need to be able to win a race on foil and fins. And it's the case of Pierre, Matteo, Maciek. Mario Mortepont, you've had an but, amazing uh, yeah. day. Three bullets. What happened in that last race? Uh, I was leading before the fifth drive, I think. Uh, and I think I pushed a bit too much and my wing uh, went uh, outside. So. I had a big uh, crash at the drive. I'm a bit disappointed because uh, I, I, I did the, the job, but uh, still okay to win the free race uh, today. It's been a great day apart from that. How do you assess the day? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. And uh, tomorrow it's the, next, it's the last day. So we have two more races tomorrow. So I will give my best and I, I feel more and more confident in, in Foyt. So I, I hope tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna be uh, here also. Good luck for tomorrow. Yeah, there you go, Marion Mortfon. It yeah. it's, de it's definitely not come in as they were predicting. We were, no, we were hearing it was going to crank and yeah, it's yeah. going to... Nico is really good for forecast and he showed me some uh, wind guru special things. He told me tomorrow, today afternoon, going to be nuclear. Yeah, that's what I, I heard that from the locals, from every, every source I've got told me it's going to be cranking, like proper furter. Three days ago, I tell, okay, I don't... Put, put down my slalom board and today I did it but for nothing at the end <laughs> well 50 seconds to go runners up final is uh, is on Benedetti Marotti Vonk Giroux Mortifon Kurnam Vinter Cousin all to play for top result here gets you a ninth place which is solid you know single digits we say it before we'll say it again single digits on the PLA tour it's not easy to get so Enrico Marotti keep your eye on him he's got the speed today Mortifon is, is right on the back I don't know what he's doing yeah 
if if those guys are anything to do light, oh here he comes yeah, yeah but sometimes it's light yeah he wants to come in with a bit of speed look look they're gonna pump on the start for sure here we go Mortifon down this bottom end looks like he's had a good start marotti with a good start benedetti with a good start as well and cornham in the middle with a good start the lightweight dane we've got the heavyweight dane in the winners final and we've got the lightweight viking in this one and there we go marotti looking very comfortable in the front as mortifon goes up behind him Benedetti. and leaves marotti to it benedetti coming down pretty strong and he's not backing off nor is Pierre Mortifon though, but it Jordi, is going to be Jordi, 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 Jordi. Oh, Jordi on the fin, but it's going to be Marotti yeah. rounding first. Then we've got uh, Pierre Mortifon, oh, McCornum coming ah. through, Benedetti coming through, Jordi Vonk goes on the inside. Oh. And actually Jordi Vonk came out pretty well there. Marotti's leading, Mortifon second. I'm not sure about the move of uh, Cordum on the third legs. No, but Kurnum, he's in the third place now. It's Marotti, Mortifon, Kurnum, Vonk. Allez, Vonk. Very good jibe from Vonk on the inside and manages to get on the front of that swell, which was pretty important. If he hadn't made it round that swell, he'd have been getting stuck. So Jordi Vonk, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys cheering at home, a lot of Dutch support out there and a lot of Finn support. In fourth place at the moment, is he a sitting duck? Marotti. Still in first place. Second place, Pierre Mortefon, then Kurnum, then Jordi oh, Vonk, then Benedetti. Benedetti with a really nice jibe and loads of speed he's going to carry out of that thing. He is absolutely flying, Benedetti. Marotti is not pushing so much, I think. No, I think he's quite happy <laughs> being on the board right now in the lead. Mortifon second. Kurnum, could he be the guy that's going to cause problems here? Jordi Vonk has slipped to fifth place. Benedetti, the Italian, moved up into fourth. Marotti needs to keep it together. He has been psychologically damaged. I'm sure this event, he's had a lot of unforced errors happen good and job. needs to keep it together. But that was good. Same from Mortifon. Really nice from him. Cornham, great jibe. Benedetti, good jibe. And Vonk has slipped back into fifth place. And he's quite a long way back in fifth place. The top four. It's a battle for the first one. Eh? It's, it's a good point. This is the runners-up final. It doesn't matter where you finish in fourth or fifth. Every place counts. So this is the battle for ninth place. Winner Enrico Marotti at the moment. Or leader, I should say. Pierre Mortifon, though, looks like he's biding his time. Maybe he's going to put some pressure on the Croatian. He knows what's been happening to Enrico in this event. And he might let play that on him. Two jibe marks to go, oh. and there we go. Mortifon has gone on the inside, laying the pressure on Mortifon. Great move from Pierre Mortifon, but Marotti oh, goes on the inside. And Pierre, it's not worked out for the Frenchman. Benedetti's going to come through. Cornham's going to come through. Marotti now has oh, some now it's serious light distance. Light. It's like you see Pierre cannot really Yeah, play. it's definitely lull there. But Marotti... Pierre from one, two, seven. Oh. It's difficult to take, isn't it? These extra two jibes have definitely caused some issues. Marotti, one jibe mark to go. We've said this plenty of times this week, but he needs to keep it together. Enrico Marotti from Croatia. Yes. Solid. Nice. Benedetti. He's been racing really good this week. Kurnum having a good race as well in 11th place. He can't be more than 80 kilos, Sebastian Kurnum. Yeah. Probably the lightest rider in the field. But and Benedetti's challenging here. No, I think if normally he cannot pass. You never know. He may be sneak up on him. We've seen it with uh, Alexander Cousin and the Beast. Just sneaked underneath. But he's going to have to go absolutely light speed if he's going to do it. Surely he can't know. I think he's backed off a little bit now already. So Marotti will take this win in the runners-up final elimination eight and finish ninth. Benedetti, though, has pushed him all the way, I tell you. <laughs> he won much no, in the end. Okay, Marotti, Benedetti, Kurnum, good race from him. Then we've got and uh, Cousin and Jordi. Does get through just behind Pierre Mortifon. Lost so much on that jibe. He went aggressive. It didn't pay off. Yeah. And that will be a discard for Pierre Mortifon. I, I think um, Marotti slowed down so much that Pierre said, OK, I go on the inside. The job is done. And it's when you think... He couldn't hold it, could he? Done, it's not. I mean, Pierre Mortifon has got 
Um, I don't think he's had any races outside the winners' final. This is the first one. No, no, he's dead. Something was this. Ah, yeah, the last one. He got a ninth. So it's his discard anyway. Yeah, and he was fighting with Enrico. So. Yeah, it's his and discard. Anyway, so Pierre Mortefon will maybe lose out. No, he's quite far behind actually. Well, maybe Enrico, if he's no, no, it's a runs up final. No, Enrico's going to stay behind Pierre Benedetti. No, he may ben no, he's not going to change because of the discards. Okay, right. Well, as we go into this winner's final, we will no doubt see a few movers and shakers because Michelle Becker is on 22 points. Amado Vriesweig is on 22 points and uh, Matteo Iacchino is also on 22 points. Uh, their discards are, as long as they don't finish seventh or worse, as long as they're inside the top seven, we will have places moved. Becker will drop back, really will drop back because his discards are 22.5. So he will count 20 points. He will literally go from fourth right the way out of the top 10 maybe, which is just huge for Becker. Just realize that. So here we go, final. Johan So, Vriesweig, Preen, Rakowski, Goya, Yakino, Martini, Stallman in his first ever final, the young Brit. Great to see some new talent coming through. Nico Goya is looking in very good form right now, but Johan So, let's not count out the young Danish rider, only 20 years old. Uh, also, Matt Rakowski looking in good form today. He needs to kind of cement that third place. Can he get onto the podium in this? Well, he has to be able to stay in third. He can't catch second, can't catch first at the moment. But he can stay in third, which would be a big result. Closest to the pin, once again, Matteo Iacchino. Upwind of him, the other Italian, Bruno Martini. Then we've got uh, Nico Preen on the other Neil Pride. I guess I asked. You see a lot... Yeah, this oh, looks like some down. big goss, actually. Yeah. We've got Amado Vriesweig just upwind of Preen. Then we've got the Beast. A little bit of spray from Bruno Martini. And then Maciek Rakowski kind of sitting back at the moment. And then at the top end, we've got Stallman and Nico Preen as yeah, the Beast the really line. slowed down. A lot of the guys slowing down. Did Amado Bruno jump the gun? The, yeah, I don't know. Bruno kills the start. Maybe. That was a general recall. We'll have to wait and see. But it was a great start if it wasn't a general That's recall from Amado Vriesweig. Also, Bruno Martini down this bottom end, also looking very good. So Amado uh, Vriesweig and Bruno Martini first and second. Yes. Is it a general recall? That's the question. Maciek, Maciek is not there. No, it's not. It is not. It's a clean start. Maciek Rakowski in there. A little wobble from Bruno Martini. But it is Amado Vriesweig round in first place. Bruno Martini in second. Then we've got uh, Matteo Iacchino, followed by Johan So. Nico Preen on the inside. Then we've got Stallman. And then we've got Nico Goya right at the back. Is he doing this for any other reason but for show? It's I don't think so. He's not that strong the winner. Maybe that small front wing's going to hold it here. Oh. Amado round, Martini round, Matteo round, Johan round, Preen round. At the moment, Goya's got a big fight on his hands. He's level with Stallman at the moment. He's up into sixth place. Can he fight his way all the way through the fleet? If he was to stay there and the beast was to gain some places, we could see a shift at the top. But at the moment, Amado Vriesweig is gunning for the podium. Round in first, Amado. Second place, Bruno Martini. Little bit wayward by Yakino, but manages to get the power on. Johan So. Goya then we've got down. Breen and Nico Goya is going straight. He is going so direct at this mark. We might see one of those massive speed bursts from the Frenchman. Yeah. Just keep your eye on the bottom of the screen yeah, because I think Nico Goya is coming. It's not that I think. Ooh, it's little Goya. moment. Goya missed a touch. Of wind to He's be able going to straight, isn't he? Bruno Martini has gone very direct here with Amado Vriesweig upwind. And yeah. Bruno Martini is pushing for the inside. Whoa. He doesn't get it. They Amado Vriesweig first, then Bruno Martini, then the Beast pushing on uh, Matteo Iacchino. A bit of pressure from the Goya young uh, Danish rider. And here comes <laughs> Nico Goya. Nico Goya is coming through the fleet here. He's still not got into, well, he's into fifth place. He's picking one rider off at a time. We've 
Still got reaches left. Still got three reaches left. Nico Goya still in fifth place, but he's coming on strong. The Beast fighting out with Matteo Yakino, but Goya is gaining on them. Out in front, Amado Vriesweik. Surely that is a lead that he wouldn't lose from here. Bruno Martini in second. Johan So and uh, Nico Goya, let's go back to that other view because uh, Amado Vriesweig is going to go round. Then we've got Bruno Martini, Good then Johan So, then uh, Yakino. Nico Goya trying to take the inside oh, line. And Nico, Nico loses it, totally spins out, yeah. manages to hold it, but he's totally lost ground no, on yeah, the he has a chasing gear. pack. He you can see, just couldn't grip. So it's now up to the beast. Can he get oh, some out? We lose oh. Bruno Martini. Martini. Bruno Martini is gone. Bruno Martini, the Italian, has totally exploded. Amado Vriesweig is still in the front. One giant mark to go. Johan So moves up into second place. Matteo Yakino in third. Amado Vriesweig needs to bring it home for Bonaire here. The beast hits the water but manages to get it back under control. Yakino well, yeah. third. Where is Nico Goya? We've got Preen, I think, coming back up. Wow, what a race Nico Goya is making ground. He could end up finishing fourth here. Preen is not going to give him an easy ride, but Amado yeah, Vriesweig at the front. Goya, Goya is going to pass Preen. Amado Vriesweig is not backing off here. Luke We've got to watch this all the way to the end. We've got our eye on Nico Goya at the back. The Beast in second. Matteo Yakina, but Amado Vriesweig on the future fly board. Severn Sales is going to win the eighth elimination. What a race from Amado Vriesweig. Second place, Johan. And so the beast second third place best result of the competition for Mineteo Yukino and Nicholas Goya gets back to fourth uh, I think it's Nico Preen in fifth then Stallman then Maciek Rakowski we didn't see him all race no he get a bat he, I mean he's slowed down Oof. I think he's slowed down on the start and then Bruno Martini must be somewhere he's just <laughs> coming he's, he's limping okay, home okay. wow <laughs> intense Wow, those uh, extra look, two. <laughs> Goya, he slowed down on the start. Oh, he did. He thought he was over. So was R Rakowski by the looks of it. Whew. That was intense. Good race from Amar, though. Really I, solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you are one with a bit of gap, it's. I mean, it's not done, but. Uh, well, it's definitely not no, done. No, We've it's seen not that. done, but. It, I, you know how close they are? The other one, two, three, four. At this point, Bruno Martini was looking solid. Yakino, you know, Johan So was in fourth place there being challenged. This was close. Look at yeah. this. Oh, look at the beast. Yeah, yeah they touch. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a beast. <laughs> um, Amado Vriesweig and Bruno had a little wobble there. And this was the, the reach where we lost Bruno. It was looking all good for the Italian in second place and that was where Goya lost it just in yeah. the background he just sort of span it out watch Bruno <gasps> oh that was where it went oh Corcodillo. I mean it does seem to be the JP Pride riders that are having a few wobbles yeah maybe they're on bigger kit or they are too tall <laughs> they're all big aren't they <laughs> <laughs> they cannot have only advantage. Oh, man, there look, we go. It's if exciting. You, if you look the win outside, it's, gonna, it's dropping a lot huh, now. It has, it's you're right. Like, yeah. yes, like yesterday, maybe? Yeah, it has just looked, I mean, just in time, really. That was the final, and the win just looks like it has dropped. Okay, Ben, I will go to prepare Cheers, myself. Cedric. All Thanks right. for everything. Yeah, no way. Thanks for good. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Oh my life. Well, there we go. So that was it for the eighth elimination. Like I said, who said foil racing isn't exciting? We had some absolute moments, let's say. And, uh, you know, like I said, in the early rounds, people were saying, oh, six boys, it's a bit long, it's a bit boring. But those extra jibes did make a difference. We're going to have some interviews on the beach. And I think first up, we've got Blanca Alabao, if I'm not mistaken. Blanca Alabao finally taking a win. How does that feel? Oh, it feels super nice. Like finally, been the whole morning trying there, but Marion didn't have any mistake in the whole day. So finally, she got a mistake, and I was there to to get the ballot. So super happy. Was close with Justine on the last leg. What was going through your head? Yeah, it was like just keep pushing, and and I know that it was a little bit faster than her, so I just had to relax and push my 100% <laughs> and now to see your teammates as well Amado, Matteo 
Amazing, hey? Yeah, super happy. Both of them did it really well, so I'm really happy with, with my team. Yes. Go celebrate. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, like I said, we just finished elimination eight. Let's have a little look at the results as they come through. Um, again, I'm looking forward to refreshing the results. Nicholas Goya, oh, it's been updated super quick and guess how close it is at the top. There is literally one point in it, one point. Wow, Nicholas Goya, 12.8. Johan So, 13.7. Less than a point. Point nine. Wow. That's a... Uh, uh, next start will be at 4.20. So in 20 minutes time. Um, Amado Vrieswijk now has moved up with that first place into third place. Michelle Becker drops to eighth. Enrico Marotti ninth. Nico Preen moves up into tenth place. Just ahead of uh, Benedetti. Um, what have we got? Pierre Mortefont. Okay, we're going to actually have a word with Amado Vrieswijk after that last win. Let's go and catch up with him on the beach. Yeah. Amado Vrieswijk winning that one. A very convincing win. How was it? Finally. I mean, <laughs> it should have been there earlier already. I mean, I did so many... I had some racing incidents, some, some small mistakes, trying to avoid people during the races. Now I just, we were actually all way too early at the start, but I managed to have a okay slingshot with some pumping, and I guess I got, I got the hit, and the speed was good, so and then it was all about controlling it to the end. How are you liking this new format with the extra two drives? Oh, it feels like it's two races in one. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not that long, much longer, but you have so much more opportunity to fight or make mistakes. So yeah, it's a, it's a cool, cool format. One more race today. What's your mindset now? Same thing, keep it cool, get to that final and then give it all. Go for it, good luck. Okay, so there you go, Mardo Vriesreich. Like you say, more opportunities. When the, when the pack is that tight, it's, uh, it's interesting, it's super interesting. Really good to see, actually, really good. It's making it uh, some crazy, crazy week this has been. We've got still got one day left. I, I actually thought we were doing two eliminations today because they lengthened the course, but no, 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 we got another one. <laughs> Tati, come on, we're going to get Tati and we're just going to have a chat. We got another interview coming, but what in the meantime, until we have another interview, I'll bring Mr. Tati Franz in. Obviously, his Bonarian countryman has just won, moved up. Oh, uh, we've got Matteo Yakino, I think it is. Yeah, Matteo, yeah, yeah. yeah Matteo on the beach. Matteo Yakino, third place in that one. Back to where we're used to seeing you up in the top fighting. How's this week been for you in general? Yeah, it's been up and down. I have the speed, but. Uh, not, much, not quite a control, I would say, but I guess nobody is, uh, is in control. And uh, the things just didn't come together uh, all the time. Some missing stars, some mistakes, some bad drives, but this thing was nice. And uh, I had a nice fight with uh, Johan, uh, it was cool and uh, nothing. Let's, let's see the next one. It's super close in the standings now. What's the strategy here? Do you attack? I just try to take the, the every day as is the first day and push every elimination. Don't want to look at the points really until the last day because it doesn't make much of a sense on a long race like, like this one. So yeah, I take every race one by one and, and see how it happens. Awesome. Well, good luck for the last few races. Thank you. Interesting to hear from Matteo then. That's yeah. He doesn't look at the points. No, it's better not to look at the points. I, I, but how? How can you do that? And Antoine was doing the same, Antoine Albo. 
Yeah, because he gets first, first, first. No, but it, it, no, but <laughs> don't need to look it, at the points. It, it when doesn't you win. matter until it comes to like to, to the last day. It's true, but if you look at their racing, if that's his mentality, it's really interesting yeah. for me because he always looks very solid. Yeah, he, do, he, he just does his thing. Don Tualbo was the only guy that was always like constant, you know, like in the in the in the top three. So to to, to not having him here is kind of like weird, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. There we go. That's how it's looking. The scoreboard. Goya obviously still leading, but that gap is only one point, point now. Yeah, it's closing in. One point. Interesting. Could Johan So, the beast, could he win here? You never know. It is. It is possible. It's definitely possible. He's could pretty. It? He's pretty focused. He's pretty. Has pretty he got a podium at event yet? Mm. He was fourth in Italy. I'm thinking. In Zil, he didn't win. He didn't. Pass no, I, again, I don't know. So probably not. No. He's been up there. I in just don't know. Japan, he, he almost made it. I think in in, in Japan. Okay, Nico we got we got. Uh, Nico Prin. Nico Prin coming up. So let's go and have a chat with Nico. He had a good race then, actually. Fighting. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I'm here with Nico Prin, one of the most famous windsurfers. Fifty thousand subscribers now on YouTube, but also absolutely flying here on the World Tour. Uh, fifth in that one, talk us through your race. Yeah. Well, first of all, shout out to everyone watching. Uh, it's an absolute blast to give you guys the show out there. It's, it's so much fun now with the six jibes. It's so exciting. Um, was really happy to make it back to the final. Uh, didn't quite catch a really good start, but the, the first jibe, I, I don't know where I took that from. I cranked it around so hard, came out really well. Was back in, I think, third or fourth, fighting with Johan. Uh, and then uh, the outside jibe maybe was not so good, so I settled for fifth in the end, but uh, quite happy with that. In the end, Nico came uh, with, a, I think he had a really small sail, was, must have been around 3.7 or something, uh, or 4.5, four, four, and he was, he was struggling a little bit um, in, in the light, so I overtook him, but then he came back, and as soon as it was windy, I knew, okay, he was, he's going to get me. This new format, six jibes, it's not what you train for. Who does it benefit? Who's winning? Who's losing? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we, we all kind of, I mean, we all kind of know how to jibe. It's just two extra jibes. I guess it's whoever is more fit because I think it take, takes the pulse a bit higher. So it's a bit more exhausting. Um, I kind of like it, but, uh, you know, we take whatever comes at us. And I guess next winter we got to train some more jibes. <laughs> Awesome. Well, good luck for the rest of the races today. And yeah, one more. Yes, one more for today and then we're done for today. One more. Mm, one more. One more. It's a big uh, one. Like one you said, more. physically demanding. Well, you were out there. You did six jibes on the fin. I don't feel it. Of course you don't. You're a beast. I don't, I don't feel it. Monster. Then the, then the thing is, no. <laughs> after pose, I went. I went back home, and I was only training jiving to like improve the okay. acceleration after the jive. And I, I think I pretty much like ha yeah. have it, you know. Um, the the problem is, I would say, you're not being rewarded visually because of the foils. Yeah. But I was saying that in poser, your jibes were getting better. Good. Yeah. Considering yeah. how hard it is, because I know how difficult it is yeah. out there. And I think maybe people watching kind of compare the fin jibe to the foil jibe, but I'm kind of comparing it to what. A normal fin job. You've been pretty yeah, consistent. I'll give you that. Doing my best. Uh, we're also let's have a look at the results because we have had some big movers there. Matt Chet Rikowski's dropped from third to fifth, mm -hmm. but it's only four points off third. You know, yeah. Amado Riesveik moves up from equal fourth or whatever he was fifth into third now. Well, there you go yeah. on, on the screen. Yeah. So Yakino steady his best result equals his best result of this competition he moves solidly into fourth place again only a few points off Reese fight so it's all to play for 100 percent, isn't it it looks yeah, like it's like gonna the top be three, the top the three to five will be fighting for the for the last podium yeah. i think in my, in my opinion yeah at, no at it looks moment. like that it looks like it? that it definitely unless there's a there's a, a big, big shake big between it can't be there can it can it? be it can be I I it's going to be one of those top five i think at this stage yeah, like Maciak, Giacchino and Amado will be the... The crazy thing is, and that's what you see when you're inconsistent, Becker ended mm. up with a 30 
in that one. Yeah. So he's ended up having to discard that, and then he has to count to 22.5. Yeah. Yes. And that's the that's problem. When you've got that horribly two big discards, you've got no room for error. Yeah, I think in the in, in the last um, Oh, and he crashed into you. Yeah, because he, he was pushing oh, yeah. too much. I was uh, I already closed the mark. Like, I was like, nobody will come inside. And then I saw him, like... <laughs> And he probably didn't need to. He, he didn't need to, no. Because if, if he would go uh, like around me, he would probably still yeah. make it, you know? But he wouldn't go on the inside. But it, it's racing. And I, I, but I was also pushing a bit <laughs> also, so I don't know. Yeah, but you, you have to I was, push. Yeah, I know. was pushing until the end. Uh, but I think I went like too far downwind and then was going back upwind. So I met, I went too far, I mean, too close to the mar to jive. So when I so when I flipped the sail, I kind of like like lost the wind. Okay. And then I saw um, Pierre and... I was yeah. like, no, and then I. It's, it's I was just there, no, to make it, and then it's like gone. Yeah, it's, it's so it's, it looks it's so a, tricky on yeah, the fin. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like any moment, any moment you even put a toenail out of place, yeah, and it's d over. Yeah. But um, I go, I give all the guys who are falling like the big, like big applause. Yeah. That's how they do it on this like nasty conditions. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. But um. It is what it is. The racing it is. So there's going to be people out there saying, Tati, why aren't you foiling? I'm in love with um, Fit and Finn. I don't feel the the same feeling I have for Finn for the foil. So I don't have the same, like, yeah. um, you know, like the same motivation, connection. connection. So that's why I don't want to go foiling. I want to keep it to the real surfing thing. And it's what makes me in love with the, with the sport. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. And I, I want to promote that. it like more, you know, like the fin, which is still amazing, you know, you get to the connection with the ocean, you feel the wind and everything. It's, it's, it's another mm. thing. With foiling, it's also another thing, but with fin, it's, another, it's, a, it's a something that you will never lose the, the, the yeah. connection with. I mean, I can go out, I can jump, you know, you, you, yeah. you can have fun, but with the foil, you cannot jump because it's like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I, I mean? Know, I know what you mean. It's, for me, it's, it's all about fun, so that's why I don't foil. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's definitely, I mean, obviously, there have been people out there who have never foiled in their life. Yeah. It is a different feeling, obviously. Yeah. And it's very difficult. And there'll be a lot of guys here, you know, Pierre, I know Yakino, I've been reading in the chat. He still loves the fin, yeah. but he knows to get his best results, you have to. he has to be on yeah. the foil. But like me, if I have to go foil, I will go on this big board with the foil and then with the small seal. Yeah. That's for me, it's, it's fun. Yeah. As soon as you go with, with, with these big seals, it's a different kind of um, thing. So that's why I don't really do it. And um, yeah, that's about it. Well, there you go. Let's talk about you, about your slalom champion, <laughs> Indo champion. <laughs> I want to know about, about you now. No, it's okay. No, no. Tell me. It's probably 10 years you, ago now. You know that I'm, I'm the speed world champion in the. In yeah, the Indo. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Yeah. You were the fastest I was the only one guy. Who, yeah. They turned the fans up, I heard. I your come band. on, no <laughs> way. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Fuck you, man. Hey, what do you do? I have three times, man. <laughs> it's easy, man. <laughs> hang on. If we had the right hang gear, on, it's hang easy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If we had the right, <laughs> if we had the right gear, it's easy. <laughs> there you go. Leave these two Dutchies to talk. No, that's the okay, oh. so I come here down, okay. and I'm pumping for three heats in a row at every <laughs> fucking mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, you know how how hard it is to finish a race on the fin with six jibes. No. And they go, well, Tati told me it's easy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it is easy. <laughs> it's <laughs> easy. <laughs> it's if, if you learn, man, come on. But you're doing, <laughs> okay. but you're doing, okay, you're doing both full and, and, and fin. So it's kind of like <laughs> to get used to the fin again when you're jiving, right? Yeah, for sure. That, that, for that, sure. Like so when you're in the fin rhythm. And then you, you go it's, back. it's a bit yeah, easier, so yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm in the fifth rhythm, so I can see from the cruise, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you got fifth, no? No, I finished, I think, seventh. Seventh? Yeah, because I got um, crashed with, um, oh. with, with, with Becca in the last mark. No. Yeah. But um, You crashed into him? No, he, no, I jived. There was no space between the mark and me, and then just go like, bam, bam, bam. like, <laughs> I, 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 I turn around and say, what, what are you doing? Like, why do you, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God, this guy. Shit. Like, I mean, he was up for a big result, though, so I think but it yeah. fucked him a bit more than it did you. But, but then you go, go around, around, around yeah. Yeah, it's easier. No, it's funny because the other day, Machek had like a little bump into me. Yeah. And he's like, man, I, I thought you would go. I'm like, Maciek, I'm on the fin, okay? Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, I'm not gliding through the same. Yeah. I was making a planing jive, but when you only have foils in front of you all the time, yeah. 
like your your perception is changing too, no? I think to me, I think every jibe matters. The, it depends how how you get the gas out out of the jibe yeah, with yeah. the fin. Then you can go. But if you have this little gas which is not not enough to make you go, yeah, yeah. then you get then you get stuck. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a big fight between knowing what to do and then not, what not not to do. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. And the fool once you're up there, and then you make a little, a little mistake. It's just like woo woo. You just. I mean, those those waves. They they helped us a little bit. Huh? Yeah. Like like some guys were getting shaky, getting pushed wide because of this yeah. wave, you know, and and that yeah gave us a little opportunity. Yeah. But um, and I saw these guys like when they are jiving and then they get they get this ghost. Yeah, yeah. They are going like further down. Yeah. yeah and you I'm like, like oh, I'm like, yes, the inside. I'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm you know, like yeah, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty nice though. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought the wind would be more. Eh? Like I thought too. So. I, I, you were on 6-0 in the end? 6 -oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was on 6 -8. But I was thinking to, to go up to the beach and then get the 7-0. Yeah, but then yeah like you should. Yeah, yeah you should have I should have. No, but actually, in, in my heat, the wind was, was good. No, the, the gusts are fine. I mean, yeah. I'm full on 6-8 in the gusts, but yeah. just the holes are huge. Big, huge. They're big. I think I was lucky in my heat that I had that it's like this this perfect um, um wind. Yeah. Unless I get to the I mean to the fifth mark, it's yeah, a bit yeah. shaky. But Man, the further you go down the course, the less wind you have. Yeah. Like you get one more little gust in front of the finish line. Yeah. But it's almost too late too already, late, yeah. and you have to pass a wave where the foil yeah. can pass it easier yeah. again. But for sure, in the um, I mean. I was almost doing 35 knots on the it's on the first reach, you know. Fast, huh? You need some wind to do yeah, this, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, show doing these speeds shows that it's still there is it's wind, possible. you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 str it's strong in the gust. But I think if we would have done like maybe like four buoys, we would have b better chance now. For any time, because you lose. I think any time. Yeah, I yeah. actually think the funny thing is, I I felt like we were losing more on the long reaches than yeah. we did on the short reaches. Yeah. Because the short reaches somehow are more broad as well, and yeah, true, the true. long reaches are a bit more tight, and yeah. we're not we're not faster than the foil anymore on those reaches, you know. So it's not like okay, in the past it was like the longer the reach, yeah. The l the more chance you had to make a difference on speed, yeah. But the difference on speed is not there anymore. Nothing, yeah. Just on the first well, reach when it's more downwind, you know, we are more control, so the gust you can accelerate a little yeah. bit more. But even then, it's like, you like uh, Amado. I think yesterday was doing 36 knots, a bit over 36 knots. It's it's, it's, a, it's a speed I didn't reach on the fin this event. Yeah. So it shows that uh, yeah, even that speed advantage starts to yeah. <laughs> starts to fade yeah, away. Yeah, but I think also, uh, but it also depends like how like like how choppy it gets in the end. Man, it's choppy. It's for, huh? for me, like I feel like I'm almost on the edge of like yeah, yeah. getting like yeah. I mean, I mean, Ben Ben knows the the style of Malte, but you know, I feel like the, <laughs> the Malte style if you, if you here is this, working you will, pretty well. Yeah. Fly away. Yeah, but still, you need you you kind of need to adjust all the time. Yeah, like you go down that wave and you go Malte style with the head back to, yeah. to lift the and then the moment you're over that chop and the gas comes you're like leaning back yeah. forward again to make it go down it's like true, it's true yeah it's, true. it's tricky so i tricky. think we go we do like 35 and then 30 35 yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want but back to business that it's 4-1 oh shit yeah oh yes. shit, shit yeah the county did competition did you beat me today i was uh, in the loser final oh yes yeah. you were not yeah because of uh, Tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, though. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. I'll Tomorrow is a strong forecast, eh? Like, like, uh, uh, fair enough. I expected more wind now, but it let's trust it some locals. It's also dying, the wind. Man, it, I thought if it was just gonna pick up. If you see in the front, I mean, in yeah, on in top the it's um, not. It's getting glassier. Already, I mean, already in the in the finals, like the the run up area was getting yeah. very, very dodgy. Yeah. You know, and there it almost doesn't matter when you're yeah, on the fin or foil anymore. Like, if it's dodgy, it's dodgy. Yeah. Let's see what they decide to do. Well I mean, for now it's still on, or yeah, yeah. We're starting in like 4:20. That's in two minutes. In two minutes. If people will get to the first mar, I mean to the to the start line. Yeah, because it's mean, lighter it's at the moment. Just just out of our sight. I mean, they moved the 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 first reach up, so from the commentary booth we cannot really see the no. the the starting line anymore. Ah, seven oh, medium. Yeah, seven oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think now I'm not gonna risk that fin anymore. No. I'm afraid I have to you jump on, go the on the on the foil, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. When it's not too windy, it's okay. I will uh, do my best, like always. <laughs> mm? But basically, you are you are cheating. Uh, wh what am I cheating? You're, I doing, you're yeah going foiling fin, foiling fin. You're, I not, know. you're not you're not loyal. I'm I'm not loyal. Me no. and Jamie are loyal. We're like, we do yes. whatever. We just go for it. Yes, I think soon we gotta have uh, yeah. Ben back on the on yeah. the booth. Profit, you're on.
You're on, brother. The slalom indoor You're champion. <laughs> the champion. And, uh, and the, 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 the master champion the also. Ma oh, yeah. And, and He's the indoor champion, master champion. What, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> I just made your chair wet. Oh, Jordy, Jordy, Jordy. Right, well, we're going to, I would say we we'll take a break, but I think we're starting now, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Okay, yellow flag is up for elimination number nine. There you go. Uh, Jordi and Tati Franz in the house. Hope you enjoyed that.
I actually couldn't hear anything they were saying, so um, you'll have to let me know. But I'm sure it was all good fun, that's for sure. <laughs> um, right, well, we got one heat in that early round. We've got uh, Board, obviously, who was in here before, Cedric. Uh, Michelle Becker, we're not used to seeing him in this first round. Then we've got uh, Schoberg. Uh, and you don't really want to be in this round because it's an extra round you have to do. And with six boys out there, you're doing a lot more work. So it does make a difference. Uh, we've got uh, Sokos. We've got uh, Van der Heuvel, Kudu. Uh, Petifer and Vorenberg. Do we still have Vorenberg? I'm guessing I haven't seen him. So we will have to wait and see. Oh, it's a bit hot and sticky in the booth, I won't lie. The wind has definitely dropped a bit. We actually thought maybe they weren't going to start. So, interestingly, they are pushing on. Let's... Uh, Let's see how far we go. Yesterday it did do the same thing, but way worse, and then it came back super strong. I'm still confident we're going to get super strong. Oh, bit of uh, changing of uh, wings. Was that Nico Goya? It was. So he went on his small wing and small sail, and it obviously cost him. Uh, now he's back to Big Bertha, which is still only like 4.8. Something like that. So here we go. Where is, I think that's Mr. Pettifer, who's just dropped off the plane. Oh, Simone. Okay, down this bottom end. And a big shout out, sixth place for our UK young gun, Stallman. That's a pretty good result. But now we're on to this first round. We've got uh, Kudu, good, good start from him. Uh, Cedric Board on the Severn sail. We've obviously got Showman. Schoberg, sorry, from Sweden in third. Then we've got uh, Sulkus, Mikanis. Look at that, a bit of swell lines coming in. We love it. Oh, hello. Johnny nearly, nearly went over there. There is some nice swell lines coming through as Cedric Board takes to the front. Like I say, early round, we're going to cruise through this top four. Oh, are we? As Kudu. That's the problem with those swell lines. It definitely causes problems. Maybe it, like, makes the makes the foil get different lifts, maybe? I don't know. But definitely seen a few more crashes since we had the swell. I love this little jibe. I was just saying it would be nice if not the next jibe, but the other jibe was the same. Like these real short little lines in it. See, the wind looks like it's coming back already. <laughs> looks to me like the top four pretty secure. Why does Becker have to qualify? Because he did pretty bad in the last round. He was quarterfinals nearly last, so that means you end up in the first round. Finished 30th in the last one. So, board round in first. <laughs> Hello. Board running first, then we got Schoberg, Sokus, and uh, Becker. I think he seems to be just cruising. Sarah Keita has just turned up with an absolute feast. I know it's not for me, but it looks very good. Um, but no, enjoy. That looks lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The wind does look like it's a little bit light right now, but when we look on the camera, she looks okay. Cedric Board just cruising through this. So we're not going to pump up the commentary anytime soon. I'm guessing the women aren't doing another race by the looks of it, because otherwise, okay. Still in the lead. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Cedric Board still leading. Oh, not so foily from uh, Schoberg. Looks light. Does look light. Yeah, it's gone a bit funky. Must be very difficult. You imagine you're fighting for an event podium. What sail do you take? What foil do you take? At any moment it might pick up. Must be such a difficult thing to... Oh, oh no, I just looked up. I saw someone in the water. No, I don't think we need to push, do we? I think we've, we've, I would say the same thing. I'm not out there. I'm not calling the shots, but I would agree. I'm not sure we need to. You made one mistake with your sail choice. 
Yeah. You wouldn't either pick up for drops. Okay, so. Okay, so this is going to be a very, very relaxed heat, this one. The top four are clearly ahead, and it's uh, pretty much a easy race. They're just cruising through till the end. Cedric Board has got one jibe mark to go. If you are just tuning in for your first time, trust me, this is not a normal race. This is the very early rounds and it isn't obviously as competitive as the later rounds. The later rounds can get pretty exciting. I can uh, assure you of that. It has been, I, I would say, maybe I say this at every event, but I feel like this event, especially in the men, has been their most exciting racing I can remember. I think the women had some great battles in Pozo as well, but for the men here, this is some of the best racing I've seen in terms of unexpected explosions, drama, you know, seeded riders going down, just changes of lead happening. It's been uh, it's been absolutely insane and quite intense, if I'm honest with you. I feel like I'm a wreck these days. <laughs> but Cedric Board cruises through. There we go. Easy. That's how you do it. We've got uh, Schoberg in uh, second place. He will qualify for the quarters. And then I think we've got uh, Sokus from Greece. And then it looks like Michelle Becker didn't really need to uh, go full power in that one and just cruised it home in fourth place. Maybe... Where does fourth go into the next round? Do you know? Because it depends where you finish in this race is what heat you get to. And I was saying there are some easier draws in the quarterfinals. Some are more heavily stacked. Some have got more foils in. Some have got, you know. I think it's first, second, third, fourth. Oh, really? Is that how it works? That's so right. he will go into that fifth heat, which I actually, no disrespect to the guys in it, but I kind of thought, well... In this wind, that would be an easier round for Becker to be in. So maybe him finishing fourth there, maybe it's connected. Maybe tactical. <laughs> Not being... He is German and they do think about these things. They're very technical, you German guys. I know you are. I've raced and competed with enough Germans. Got a good analytical brain. Especially Becker, he's on it. Here we go. Okay, Scotty Stallman. Look, proper good result for him. Sixth in that winners' final he was. It's his best result on the Pilway Tour to date. Um, we've also got Kurnum in this one. Yakino, Mortifon, Jules Dal, Pont, and TMA. But it's it is light out there. There's some big gusts coming through. I feel like we're pushing. That ah, will get you get you to stick your headset on now she's finished eating her feast and she's put it on backwards but you know I won't even need to tell you who it is because when you hear her tones <laughs> you will soon find out What's up? <laughs> we've obviously got Sarah Keita in the house mm -hmm. how are you holding up Ben good you good good no very good um pretty excited it, it, when it's like this it, the day goes very fast when the races are oh, yeah. so exciting and mm -hmm. they're coming through i mean obviously if we're going to have the first rounds like that and there's big gaps between the fourth place and the fifth place it's obviously less exciting but from what we've seen in all the fleets like the women's fleet especially it's been some intense racing oh my gosh um <clears throat> you've just been out there obviously mm -hmm. not your best day on the water today no i um I in think fact, I've a shocker <laughs> By your standards. Kind of. I feel just, um, I think if we had, it's the same effect as in Pozo, I feel like. As we go on, the foilers are just improving. So I don't know if they're just tuning up better, getting more comfortable. As the contest progresses, it gets harder and harder. Or? Mm -hmm. Or? You don't have an or? I've got an or, but do you not have one? Um, 
I don't have... Well, no, well, I don't have an ore tunnel. Well, okay, so my ore would be, speaking to the guys, it sounds like the fin is so much more physically demanding. So you might not feel it, but maybe you're more tired. I so maybe? That? I mean, I was thinking about that as well, that they have that kind of advantage, but I feel like in the four minutes that I'm doing a race, I'm, I'm okay. going all in and I don't feel the fatigue okay. necessarily. But at night, I'm destroyed, of course. Yeah. Having said that, on this course with six, six buoys, I feel that <laughs> yeah. fatigue. After the fourth mark, you... <laughs> Man, you're fighting so hard, and I think the last three legs, I'm actually fighting with myself to like keep pushing, keep pushing. Yeah, it it's looks insane. Actually, it, it's like uh, you can you can see it. But I tell you what, what I did notice today, you mm -hmm. can usually tell, but Mary Mortifon definitely went up a gear. Yeah, she Some improved something. Yeah, I something don't know. changed. Hundred yeah. percent. She's got more speed. Yeah. There was times where the other days you'd think, okay, she's going to get rolled here, and she was actually extending. She's doing that. So today, you're yeah. like, oh, okay, something happened, and she did say something about her brother tuning something. I saw them walking down the beach okay. yesterday. I heard them chit chatting. I was like, ah, oh, she's getting the big brother. She in. said that on an interview. <laughs> she said, I, uh, I think uh, Sarah said something about, and she said, oh yeah, it's good. You know, Pierre helped me tune some yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, there you go, tune in. Big difference. Big Huge I difference. mean, you've had it help before. I remember you saying with the Slam stuff, I know Arnon and other team riders has helped, maybe not here, yeah, but yeah. in the past. I and needed help putting the downhaul on the okay. sills back then. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make a difference, doesn't it? Sometimes, little tweaks. Sure, sure. Um, What's the biggest tweak? What, what would you say is your biggest? Like, you're doing obviously a lot of fin sailing. A lot of guys out there watching this will be fin sailors. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think is the biggest. Um, game changer when you get it right I mean down all I feel like is one of the most important things the like half a centimeter off you will lose acceleration Kay. and um, if you put if you when you have enough downhaul you're accelerating like like crazy you have a higher top speed um, and that's one of the biggest differences after that in conditions like this you need to tune you got to be comfortable for sure you need enough downhaul but then where your mass base is going to be is super important okay so you could you could have the highest top speed on flat water with your mass base back but in these conditions for example if you're flying out of the water all the time it doesn't make sense so you need to move your your top speed will be slower but overall on average you'll be going faster because okay. the mass base is forward and how does that feel like for guys at home and girls yeah. obviously but uh, how do you get that feeling it, it, it's a feeling isn't it and that's yeah. why it's always very difficult I've tried to make videos but it's like you've got to feel it but you've got to go to the difference of extremes I it guess takes, it takes practice for sure the best thing is always sailing with another person and then that person doesn't change anything and you're the only one doing the thing changing and then on those runs you always just need to feel again if it's a uh, tropic conditions you just need to feel like you can keep the board quite flat on the water and keep riding on the fin rather than getting caught in every chop yeah. all the time. So especially you, you feel when you get stuck all the time yeah. and rather than flying over. So yeah. and, and especially I like what you said about downhaul. Downhaul is a massive one. When you haven't got enough downhaul, if you don't know the feeling, it's like, it's like someone's got the brake on yeah. and it's like pushing the board down. Yeah. And it just won't lift. You feel a lot of power. Yeah. And when you're sailing by yourself, it feels awesome. But you notice straight away when you're sailing with other people. Yeah. A, a little more, a little less. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good so. tip, sailing with other people. Because sometimes it's very difficult to tell on your own. If it's you, if it's the conditions, if it's whatever. Yeah. So unless you're sailing or, you know, tuning up, let's say, with someone, it is tricky. Okay. We've nearly got uh, one minute until the start. Um, as I said, we've got, uh, yeah, you're right, Becca goes into that last heat. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, Stallman, Kernum, Yakino, Mortifon, Jules, Del Pont, TMA, and uh, Schoberg. Yeah, me is always smiling. <laughs> he's such a good guy. He's he's going well as well, isn't he? He's going, you know, well, he's going well. He's going well on the fin. He's really pushing hard. Yeah. It must be hard mentally though, because the foils does it's seem in the men. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's hard to take that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's uh, I could imagine. Okay, here we go. Mattel Yakino down this bottom end. More to font down this bottom end. So we've got uh, Kernum in the middle. Store Stallman. Oh, it's getting close between him and Kurnham there. It's definitely a bit of swell. Look at Jimmy TMA up that top end. He's gonna have to push. Could it come back? 
he needs the wind to come back he can't afford for it to go light it does look a bit light out there for the fin I have to say there's some big holes coming through but Mattel Yukino looking uh, looking pretty solid right now that's the thing again the gusts coming through are pretty strong but it's getting a bit more patchy out there yeah, as I say that Jimmy TMA it's just roll Kurnham and he's going to take the inside line that's the one advantage oh he's actually backed off there <laughs> thought better of it with three foils bearing down on him but uh, Mortifon goes through Yakino okay. goes through TMA on the inside Kurnham and then Stallman 